This ain't our first time. Dude, this isn't head. even our first time actually punching each other in the face today. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> You're a squirrely little bastard. And you hit hard. <laughs> but no way. Yeah, you did. Did it feel like it was hard? Well, you're just to be, I mean, to be respectful, just, you're just a bigger guy, oh, yeah. you know, and you can, you know, there's power there. You oh, know, yeah. Your backhand. Yeah, I was trying to go soft. And your, your to kicks too, too, you know, you think they're soft, but they're. Oh, really? Hard. Did yeah. the kicks feel kind of hurt? No, they, hard? Didn't, they didn't hurt, but just oh, I'm yeah. saying, like, any, in, like, in comparison, I guess, because, yeah, you, sometimes like, you and Isaiah's kicks on the back are a little weak. Yeah, they were a little weak. <laughs> <laughs> you don't kick much, right? Hey, dude, oh, move this microphone. All right. All right. Oh, there you go. All right, you can hear me now? There you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, dude, you fucking don't kick stuff. Right, mm -hmm. you did kicking before with Cody. Mainly boxing, mainly boxing. That's what that's what we've worked. Oh, on. you guys, it's boxing. boxing. Oh, everybody, this is an awesome thing. Everybody, the whole crowd out there. Everybody, listen up. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, it's I, just me and him here alone. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> hey, everybody. Oh, but uh, this guy. Here's the credit. State champion wrestler, what weight class? 126 pounds. Dang, the squirrels, the yeah, spiel thing. Little guys. <laughs> That's sick, dude. Yeah, so. I, I used to think that was a big weight class. Dude, fix, come on, put this mic in. I can't even hear your voice. I used to believe that was oh, a big dude, weight class. I can't even hear You can just move this wherever you want. Just do this. <clears throat> you, you're going to just bend this thingy. Like this. Look at how I got it. Okay. Try right. that out. Yeah, that's better. That's better. Right there. Oh, right. shit. I didn't even take any of this. No. No. Dude, hey, should we, we want to take this and... Okay, no, I already did. I already did. Oh, you already did? Yeah. Oh, fuck. You'll be okay. <laughs> Whatever. I'm fine. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, what were you saying? I'm sorry. State champion scroll wrestling. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm just going to get lost in this <laughs> conversation as well. Dude, no. We'll tell, okay. When I saw you in California and today we fought... Yeah. Because you have big aspirations. Very big aspirations. Yeah, what are you trying to do? What I'm trying to do. Um, what I'm going to do. Okay. What I'm going to do. I gotta, I gotta, you got to switch those things. You know, got to change okay. the terminology. What what I want to do and what I'm going to do. That, that's one thing that I'm very big on is like talking in terms of things that are going to happen. Like as if they've already happened. Like, you know. Uh, yeah, like manifestation. Exactly. Exactly that. Um, what got you onto that? A lot of videos. Just in... in I can tell you my senior year, I, I did every single morning I woke up, I'd get in the shower and every time, pretty much any time I was in the shower, I told myself 10 times and I'll tell you what I said. I will be the 126 pound 3A Idaho, 3A, Idaho state champion. No I way. said that 10 times. I, that, that was my in positive. The shower. Yep. That was my positive. Was the shower hot or cold? Fuck, it was hot. It was you hot in the hot. morning time, you know, and at the time I really wasn't as knowledgeable on like cold showers and the yeah. benefits of that, but. But fuck the benefit. Yeah. It's like, it's just straight torture. It's such a good morning self-torture, isn't it? It, it is. Hey, I, I'm a beast at shower I contemplate it now. a lot, though. I like it. I, you feel so good after, though. I can't complain. I feel great after. Yeah, dude, I've gone to the point, because at the beginning when I would always put cold showers, I used to have to like try to breathe and like do some Wim Hof breathing <laughs> or something that's going to like make my body Calm warm. You down. And now it's like, I just turn it on cold as possible, and it feels like hurting your head cold. Right, if you put... If you put your head in on the coolest possible here, especially on these snowy days. Right when you wake up. Oh, there you go. Keep that mic you there. Do it, you do it right when you wake up? Uh, whenever I take a shower. Anytime I ever take a shower. I've decided there's no exceptions ever shower. It has oh. to be cold showers now. <laughs> and uh, dude, I just fucking feel normal in it now. It just feels normal. Like I just take normal... Not normal cold showers. Well, if you're showering with, if you're showering it's not with like I need a breathe special anymore. Well, if you're showering with your significant other, know, she's probably not enjoying yeah. the cold oh, no, water. Yeah. No, she's not enjoying uh, it. Seriously, <laughs> seriously, that's not a good. Uh, that's a bad mix. It's like, can we just do lukewarm? <laughs> <laughs> Let's meet in the middle. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Oh, hold up here. I come prepared, brother. Okay, here's a good question for you. You ready? Go away. What inspired you to take the leap and be on my podcast today? <sighs> well, you know, to be I, there's there's a first for everything, so that's that's one thing. Two, I've I've known you. I can't say I've like known you, known you, but I've always I've always thought you were a freaking cool guy since the first time that I met you in the Badger Den. You were just awesome. Your vibes are pretty cool. And same man, same. You exactly. freaking. You, you put a whooping on me and gave me a headache back then after we left because we had full sparred. Oh, uh, yeah. But I'm not trying to hurt you. I don't believe in that. No, no. I don't believe listen, in trying to hurt people. No, just to make that clear because I feel like I got taught, at least where I was from in 10th Planet in the uh, Bang Muay Thai gyms, 
to take care of your training partner uh-huh. because that's who's going to be, you need them for tomorrow. Yeah. So you can keep training, keep getting better. Respectful. So people who are just trying to go all out and hurt is people end up getting hurt real easy in combat sports, especially like strike. Oh, jujitsu is where I get like my injuries where I had gotten my injuries. I was telling you yeah. earlier, uh-huh. But striking, I feel like that's where you could get like brain damage. Yeah, exactly that. <laughs> and if you're striking with a guy that's got some weight on you, yeah. you're, you're playing with fire right there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, the inspiration really just, you know, I've, like I said, I've always thought you were a cool guy. And then I, you, you were into filmmaking. And like I said, I had asked you, like every, everybody knows Wesley Turner, everybody, everybody, he takes the amazing photos in Buell and every, everybody knows that. And I, it was, it, I didn't even click. And that's funny that you had explained that first thing today. It, it hadn't <laughs> clicked to me. Like when I had met you that you could have, cause same last name, you know, son, like I, that's what you think, you know, you don't like with just, you, Oh yeah. No, you know, it just seems you, obvious. You don't look and say that guy looks kind of chinky. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you, you know, you know, just the, if we got the same, if anybody like some last names are common, but pretty much to answer your question, uh, the inspiration really, you just, you kept pressing, kept pressing you. Uh, well, I wanted to, cause we were having such a fun conversation in California and we could talk about martial arts stuff. We, you're, I, I love that martial arts stuff. You love that martial arts stuff. And it's great to run into good people that you can go to the gym and train with that shit's So fun. Yeah. Uh, well, I hadn't talked to you in, I don't even fucking and forever. You're, you're a freaking killer, dude. You you and your girl, Kendall, and you guys are just straight bread different. Thank you. But after, you know, getting to know you today when we've been talking and stuff, kind of learning about your background, I was like, no wonder. you're. Yeah. You guys are like, you guys leveled up faster than a lot of people your age probably. I assume based off of, damn, the hardcore experiences you guys have been put through. I'm having to mature a little bit. You can mature sooner. quick when life fucking puts a boot up your ass. Yeah. But... That's how you get fucking David Goggins people. Uh-huh. That's how you, <laughs> so you get those guys. You make hardcore steel people like you guys, like Kendall and in her interviews, dude, I was saying she was deep. She's I was funny. like, she looks so bubbly and like, I swear she does like a, there's like these little kicks <laughs> that she does where she like jumps and does like a kick. Like they do like a little splits kick. You know what I'm saying? They like jump I t- do they touch and they like shake yeah. right. or something. But she does like a freaking, like a little bug flat, flat <laughs> because it's so fast. It's <laughs> quick. Like, dude, that has to, that, fireball. that's hard to do. You ever try jumping and doing that? Like, Doing a splits thing. Well, that's all that stuff is. Pretty. That'd be some useful martial arts stuff, though. Yeah, Honestly, yeah. jump, kick somebody, bam. All that good stuff. Yeah. I wish I could do the flexibility like them, but she just seems like a little bubbly figure. Is what I'm saying. It's a little sunshine. Yeah, she's a little when, sunshine. Yeah, and then when I interviewed her, I'm like, damn, that's like stone cold under there. She's like <laughs> hardcore. Freaking, she's a killer, dude. I'm competitor. She'll like take a killer no BS, competitor. Eh? Yeah, just like you. I mean, obviously, that's why you had to get into that mindset when you became a state champion. Yeah. Yeah, how was how did how was that journey? How did you shape your mind to be ready? Were you nervous uh, for the tur- for the match or the tournament? Were you, was that your one or your one time state champion Ooh, that year? Only? Okay, actually, it was a little little uh, little backstory. So my freshman year, I remember going to the state tournament as an eighth grader. Which uh, credit to Fred, he'd let me he let me skip school to go as an eighth grader and go watch these the Buell High School wrestlers in Cador at the time it was my practice. He went on to win four high school state titles, which. You know, give him his flowers. I'll credit to him. That's awesome. That's impressive. Wow. What first one in Buell yeah, to do those that? Those people are just phenomenal. They're just like gen- I feel like there's like some genetic thing about them too. Something different. Some people are just so strong. Yeah, Stephen was one of those guys. He was just like benching abnormally a large well, he, amount. He's been like a chimp, dude. And he was a big guy. Yeah, he, he was he's like one fifty two. About your height though, about a little bit. No, right? no, he's a little. He's a shorter. Little guy. To me, he's a little guy. <laughs> I, to me, I'll just throw his ass around. Yeah, he's a bigger guy than me. He's a bigger guy than me. Yes, I hope Steven's here. This. <laughs> um, uh, wait, Steven also did Muay Thai too, so we got to fucking put some gloves so on. He knows, so he knows how to fight. He's No, he just built with fighting deep in his soul. That's what, that's the thing. Is, and that's funny because you and Steven, the relationships you guys had kind of with your coaches and upbringings and end up being state champions, I feel like it's just a reflection to me of like tough adversity uprisings. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, well, I was asking if you were nervous. Sorry. Nervous. <laughs> no, you're no, you're too. okay. You're okay. Me too. I didn't as well. Uh, yeah, were you nervous for a state championship match when you were walking out there? Oh, yeah. Well, and, yeah, so nervous. What was it like? Did they spotlight you or how did it go? Well, you, you, do the, you do the parade of champions. So that, and you're sitting right next to your opponent. He's not sitting. You're standing right <laughs> next to your opponent the whole time. And I like to fight. So I, yeah. like, you know, you're, in fighting, you know, you're not going to, you don't want to be friendly with your opponent. You don't want to talk to him and have a conversation with him. That's not who I am. That's not, I mean... Maybe after, but before that's just, I can't, I, I got the nerves too. I know, I know damn well he's got the nerves too. So I, uh, I can't just sit and, and just talk to him and, and, and everything. So I, I remember feeling nervous and kind of not really looking at him and everything. And we had wrestled 
two times before in the season and both of them happened to go my way. Not happened. I worked hard for it. Happened. So, yeah. No, they, uh, I earned them. Tell they, me how it happened. Uh, the first time we wrestled, I want to say, I, I want to say, where was it? In good and grappler is the good and grappler. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, in my senior year. So I, I don't want to say I put a whooping on him. I probably beat him by like nine points. Which is that's a whooping to me, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a lot of takedowns, huh? A lot of takedowns. Yeah, it was a good, it was a pretty good match. He was, he was pretty tough. I knew I knew he was tough then, just by wrestling him. Then, then the next time I wrestled him was in Coeur d'Alene at the North Idaho Rumble, which is it was a pretty cool tournament because they they had broadcasted the the matches. So like, if I wanted to, when I'm older, whenever I can go back and look at those, which nice. is pretty cool. Um, we'd wrestled again then. Excuse me. How wait? Have you been wrestling your whole life? Since I was in seventh grade, I, I moved, like I told you, I moved here in fifth grade yeah. and you're giving me crap about that. He's like, I'm not from Buell. I actually got here in fifth grade. No, I'm I like, oh, Buell. Buell. you're just going to dismiss your home like that. No, Buell's home. Buell's home. It always will be. <laughs> um, oh, what was the question? Oh, uh, yeah. What were we talking about? <laughs> I forgot. It was just a question. You wrestled since seventh grade. Oh, seventh grade. Okay. Yeah. So I moved here in fifth grade and, uh, I seen that there was a lot of people that were doing it and it was, it was the thing and. There was just a lot of people, a lot of kids friend, who are my friends now that I kind of looked up to that they were all wrestling. And I was like, man, I want to, I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to do that. Well, Jordan, my uncle slash brother, he had, he had, he had took the step, the initial step before I did. And he, he went and wrestled first. I couldn't, you know, I was kind of, I was really like shy and nervous and okay. I was like in fifth grade. So I wasn't getting, somebody had to sign, yeah. sign me up. So I realized, no, my mom and parents were going to do that. You know, she, my mom didn't really care if I was in sports or not, just if you're being good, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was kind of up to me. I seen Jordan was, was working hard and he was winning matches and he would come home with clothes drenched in sweat and he was freaking exhausted. And, and he was just starting to like, he get started in shape. to, yeah, he'd get in shape, become, <laughs> become a better person too. Like just, he didn't have to, he, he didn't have time for no trouble, you know, and it kept him so occupied. And I remember, I, yeah, so that, that started in seventh grade and I, I was fortunate enough to have a, like a really, really good training partners. Like Jace, Jace Bauer is like, just a lot of people who had okay. wrestled for so long. Through middle school and through your whole life? Yeah, through, through middle school. Through your whole career of yeah. wrestling? Yeah, nice. pretty much. You, guys, you just had a little brotherhood. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, you yeah. guys all just kept, you guys are all the tough little bastard wrestlers, huh? Yeah. Well, and then the crazy thing is as I got older, like all these people, when I first got here, it was like all, it was everybody was doing it. Everybody, that was the thing. Well, then as people get older, you know, they, they determine what they like and what they don't like so much. Uh... I started to realize that there was the people, like I said, when I got here, they were all wrestling and I looked up to them and I, you know, I, they're my friends now to this day. But then when I, I was the new kid, so it's kind of like, you, you, it's weird, you know, when you first get to a place, um, they all started doing their own things. Like they didn't really, they didn't go to the wrestling tournaments on the off season. They, <laughs> they were, they got girlfriends and everything. You were doing freestyle? Yeah, I was doing freestyle. You were just Greco. obsessed. Oh yeah, oh man, I was full time I, I, wrestler li all year, huh? Listen, and then and then I was I was I really re after my seventh grade, I was like after the seventh grade middle school season, I went to Badgers, which is the club now because I loved it, I loved it, and uh, my my situation wasn't like money wise, I wasn't able to pay for for the way that it was set up, and mm. I thank coach because he let me come in and just get better. And Fred Bartlett, yeah, Fred, Fred Bartlett. Bartlett is just a freaking great one. He's he's the go. He's a great guy. <laughs> um, so he he, he just, has done so much. It's insane. Oh yeah, it's like a complete transformation. To be old, yeah, it's it was so wild how leadership, you know, how it works. Direct leadership just reflects into everything the people being led in the program directly is just amazing exactly he's a great leader too so that that's all where it stems from so I, like like i was saying um he, he was letting me come you know he was letting me come to practice and i i didn't have the funds to pay for practice and the tournaments and everything he made me this deal and this is you know I, i'm so grateful for it he made me this deal he said if you can keep your grades up i'll take you to these tournaments he said like i'll take you to these tournaments i just don't want you having any f's and that that's that's understandable my my mom and my stepdad they weren't really they didn't care they didn't, res respectfully, you know, they didn't, re they didn't really care if I had good grades or not. Mm. Um, and I remember a teacher telling me this, it's funny that I say that is like, it's a, probably a month after I started wrestling. She said, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I can, I'd go in there and I was like, I don't want to say I was, I, pretty much, I was a little shit pretty much. Like I was like, just bad, you know, just bad. Um, I go, I'd go in there, I'd go into class and I just to be a little shit. Well, I remember when I went in one specific day after wrestling my seventh, like after wrestling for like a month, she goes, man, you're different. She's like, you're really different. She's like, I think it's really good that you started wrestling. And I was like, then I kind of, I remember thinking like, wow, like mm. I was really happy to hear that. What do you think that different quality was that she's referring to looking back now? Uh, more self-respect, self-discipline, like just everything to do with myself and 
learn how to treat others too. Like polite. Yeah. Being polite. Respectful. Re- respectful to my teachers. Mm. And they're like, then like ne- looking back, there's no, there was no need to be like that. You know, yeah, but who then, taught you respect? Ah, uh, Fred. Fred. <laughs> Fred. <laughs> I get Fred. <laughs> Before that, were you just being a little ass? Hundred percent, hundred and ten percent. He freaking, I couldn't even tell you how many times he's 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 had to talk to me about that. Or they had realized because I, I I was still kind of getting in trouble, so there are they couldn't call my mom. I didn't necessarily. I love my mom and I still do, um, but I didn't necessarily wasn't. I didn't have a dad like I said. Like and he's Mexico somewhere doing his own thing, but. I had a stepdad who wasn't at all a good father figure. Nothing, no, nothing I wanted to be like at all in any way whatsoever. But he, they, they would call my mom and, you know, they, she kind of didn't really do anything. And they'd come back and I guess do the same thing. Well, they realized that telling Fred something was going to change. So they'd tell him and then Oof. something would happen. You know, I'd get like, I'd have to run extra or I have to do something extra. So what was it that made you give so much respect to like a wrestling coach? <sighs> he... He showed, honestly, he's probably one of the very first people that, sh- not maybe, maybe not the very first, probably maybe the first people that showed me respect. Like he, he asked questions, he listened, he cared. Mm-hmm. He, 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 he didn't, you know, he, there wasn't like, there wasn't something that he, he wanted. Like he just wanted to see, to see other, to the kids. He just wanted to see people get better and he wanted to see them chase their dreams. That, that was, that's, that's a wholehearted thing to do. You know, that's, that's, that's very, look, now that I'm mm-hmm. older, I look back on it and I go like, Cause when you're in it, you don't really think, you know, you don't really think much of it. Like you were telling me with the photos and all the things that you have, mm. like, but looking back on it, I'm like, man, like, and I mean it, like my Kindlin was in an interview and me on, on some college, but on, for some homework and the, probably the, and I did that one of the questions were like, like, what, what do you think the best thing you've ever did was or something? Right. And I'd said by far wrestling, like that changed me like so much. And like, it just taught me like. The, so many different qualities, self-respect, discipline, you know, like have accountability, like just a lot of good things. On that beautiful note, let me tell you about that story about mm, Steven mm. that I forgot. Tell me, yep. We were, we were just got done freaking doing some kickboxing on each other, chilling. And I remembered this story about Steven Mejia when I was home on leave and I was in the Marine Corps. I came home and I went and went to Steven's like... He was working out in the country somewhere with some real like cowboy, tough hillbilly ass kind of people, dude. Because we went in, we we're gonna drink, and we went. We had to go and get something from his like shop or something, and so we went to the shop and went in. And these two like hillbillies like turn on the lights. <laughs> I say hillbillies because they ended up trying to fight my buddy. <laughs> so, yeah, otherwise, they're like some respectable cowboys with their shirts off. <laughs> Oh, they were ready to go. They were ready to Yeah, dang. they busted in. They were screaming at Stephen. Calling, they were calling him names. They were pissed at him. And Stephen was just had gotten a scholarship that was going to take him to Colorado to wrestle. Yep. And they were like pissed at him, and they were yelling, "Oh, what?" Because Stephen was a tough motherfucker. He would not. Back. They were older. They were like they had to be like twenty six plus. I bet older than you guys. Yeah, oh. and we're like you know nineteen. We're like your age, literally. Because <laughs> I was just out of the Marine, just got went to the Marine Corps and came back on leave, and I went and hung out with Stephen. And he was a uh, like they were like what the hell is wrestling you ever gonna do do for you that's that's not the real world they were like screaming shit like that at him Teaser. and he was like it's gonna get me out of this piece of shit I'm gonna get an education and be better than you and shit he was like roasting he was winning the roast <laughs> you know he was winning the roast because it led to a brawl by the <laughs> other side they, they started fighting they, they started, have nothing to say no more dude they just start going at it boom 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 and then me and his, there was two two v two going on I didn't fight though no you just he sat back fight. and watched you were the friend that just I regret watched. that dude I regret that I should have jumped in but I, I looked at that guy and he looked at me what were you and doing? he took a step and I took a step and he's like don't and I was like you don't and then there's like 1v1 I'm like yeah and we just I can watch Stephen whooped his ass Stephen whooped his ass he had to work for it though that's for sure they were knocking over motorcycles and everything <laughs> running around <laughs> that shop dude it went on for like a good I'll probably say it was like a literal UFC round like a three minute match you probably weren't their friends anymore I was in there. they're probably pissed at you what? for not helping Stephen yeah you didn't no, help dude, Stephen can hold his own dude I've seen Steaming into lots of fights and wait, it was him, him versus two. It was him versus one. Oh, the okay. second guy was looking at me. I was the second guy. Oh, you just so you, they were going, and then us two were here. We were like, "Hey, don't do it." It was and a mutual was, agreement. We're like, no. "Let's let them one v one for enough. their own." Because I didn't have beef with them. I was like, "What the fuck's Your going friend? on?" Yeah, but they were had beef out of nowhere. Start brawling. <laughs> <laughs> these, these dudes, they had personal beef. That's I was funny. like, "Let them sort this out right now, so we can get out of here." That's what happened after. 
Like, how does it end? So he whooped his ass and then they just were mad and yelling at each other. And then we left. <laughs> <laughs> just ends there. Yeah. We went and got Did drunk Did you guys somewhere. get what you needed at least? Yeah. I think we went, I forgot what we went. We might have went and got beer or something. From well, that's probably, they were mad. that's probably why no, they were mad. That's probably why they were mad. No, they were bad. Maybe they were mad. <laughs> I can't even remember. My, my memory's bad out of all my friends. I can't remember shit. You gotta <laughs> see, that's what this podcast is good for too. Because I'm locking down those memories. So when I'm an old man, I'm going to be like, what? You gotta look back. So that memory of Steven, I don't even remember who that guy is. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. Let me go to my little questionnaire here. I prepared. I got a question dude. for you. What's my question? All right. Um. And this is this doesn't happen a whole lot. The, the interviewer doesn't really get, or the the host, I should oh, say, you're doesn't. Flipping the rules on. Yeah, on I'm gonna ask you a okay. question. Um. So I understand you were in the Marines. Yeah. Uh. Why Why did you? This is like I always get like, I gotta ask the question respectfully because I want the reason I ask is because no, the re, the reason I got I tell you this is because one time I was at a hotel. And there was this guy who had served and I, I guess I, I had asked the wrong question and I upset him. Oh, okay. And I didn't think that I was young, obviously oh, yeah, I was probably yeah. in seventh grade. So I didn't think that I upset him. Okay. Um, so also he's getting upset already. <laughs> You're over there. Yeah. He's like, don't ask it. No, he's like, don't ask, he said, no. <laughs> but ask me anything, dude. No, uh, it's, it's nothing. I just, nothing, nothing like the, the question I asked was probably, was probably a dumb question. I was in seventh grade, but, okay. uh, <laughs> um, so what made you want to go to the Marines? Uh, okay, I'll tell you the story. And how long? How long were you in there for? So I was a piece of shit in high school, until the last uh, year and a half, maybe. And I, I started I agree, wrestling. I, can, I, can, <laughs> I went I to state, but I didn't place. <laughs> <laughs> but I was throwing motherfuckers with uh, again Coach Gambrell's help because uh, I fucking hypersensitive my elbow like crazy mid season, and what, it was so sensitive. What was his first name? Casey. I don't know what's the other brother. Casey and what? <sighs> Okay, well, I, I just wanted to make sure we're in the, the same. Yeah, the, the, the brothers. I think the younger brother. Yeah. It's the younger. They were, they were, they were state champs in Kimberly. Yeah, I just so. always think Gambrell, and they look so much alike. They it's do. so trippy. They're, so and I they're ran badasses. into the other brother at Family Boxing before. Yeah, badass, yep. And I was like, oh, dude, what do I got to do to keep maintaining my fitness to look like you when I'm your age, dude? Because <laughs> you're, you're looking great. That, that, they're the, a stud genetic pool for sure. And they're, well, they have a... They have a, a young buck and that, that's now a sophomore and Buell. He's pretty tough, pretty tough wrestler yeah. too. Yeah. They got that fucking agility and shit. Casey Gambrell, the one that you probably seen at family box. And he actually did a, like a little, he came and showed us judo wrestling. So mm. he was a judo national champ. And during the, the Christmas break high school practices, cause I was the assistant, the assistant coach and was helping those guys out. He came in there and he was showing us some freaking, some pretty sweet techniques. So that guy. Yeah. Judo is the greatest. That's what, and so sweet. he was teaching me and he was the assistant coach and our Anthony Bartlett was the head coach in my era. That's pretty sweet. And, uh, they were tough. They were tough guys. How, for how sure. old did you say they were? Cause they don't look, they don't look too old, crazy old. I don't know. Probably late twenties. Maybe. That's my guess. Um, everyone looks old when you're young. Yeah. <laughs> yeah fair enough. Fair enough. You're like they're not adult. I don't you don't know. think you're going to get old than you do. Yeah, I don't think they had wrinkles. <laughs> <laughs> they all still had their hair. Uh, but so, you know, the Gambrell, Coach Gambrell was crazy about throwing. He was a judo guy. Oh, yeah. And after I hurt my elbow, I had to wear this fucking like brace thing that kept it from extending too much because it would hurt. And so he taught me how to go do the, just pretty much throw because I was a one, I was 182. I was bigger. I wouldn't cut. I would do one. No. I wouldn't cut. And I would just like eat and work out hard because I was starting to dive into that philosophy. But after I hurt my elbow, I was like, I better drop a weight class. <laughs> I was like, Get I need down to, there. I need to go work with some weaker people. <laughs> Get down. Yeah. Because the 182 was borderline pretty thick boys. You know, they're the bigger pretty, boys. They're pretty thick. The biggins. Yeah. So I went down to 171. It's 171, right? Or 170? It's 170. It's probably, probably was one, I think it was 171 the my time. Yeah. They, 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 they were different then. I know that. So I went to 171. I got my weight down to like 169 or something at the lowest, which was a pretty crazy drop. Yeah, yeah a couple of weeks. It I sounds think. like a pretty crazy job. And I, I was like, so then I went, to, I went and did that, did all the stuff like that. But the reason I was able to even do any good with that is because of the judo throws I learned. Because I would just grab people, pull, grab, pull them like this, and just use this as my leverage arm to to throw. You know, wow. like cowboys and things like that. All types of throws that just push because guys, bigger guys, they like to do the headbutt battles and they'll push back into you. They like get to enough get into back. each other like Rams. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly that. Oh, I've gotten into a fucking head to head smasher against <laughs> this guy, Jacob Bogner. You know, that is, so, this is a big fucker from Byler. He's super jacked. Didn't have any body fat on him. So if he was in your weight class and he was just pure lean, you're like, this guy can't cut any more weight. <laughs> he was, he was ripped. He was ripped and huge. 
And I just was like trying to, I just went into it being mean, dude. I'm like, I'm going to fuck him up. Even though I felt like a smaller guy. <laughs> so I was like, I'm a, I'm a mean dog. I'm going to get him. So I went in and we got into a headbutt match. And all I did was purely try to smash his face on my forehead. <laughs> he probably had a fucking head. I was yeah. just fucking digging as hard as I could into it. But he got mad. He tried doing it back. And we were just sitting there fucking. <laughs> Just fucking rubbing faces. Like, what the faces. fuck are these guys gonna make out? <laughs> I'm like, fuck you, fuck you. It's all one match. Uh, for the life of me, can't remember. <laughs> probably not me. I probably remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I blocked out the bad memory. Yeah, well, the bad memory is probably rubbing the face. Yeah, the I probably time. gave myself a little bit of brain damage at that moment. <laughs> yeah, throwing is the best. So you, you ever throw people? I'm not very good at it, but yeah, um, you got to be fast with the throw at your weight class. Yeah, uh, I, I don't. And it's, I can throw wrestling throw judo throws. I guess I kind of just didn't didn't spend a whole lot of time doing it. We spent like a day, maybe two days doing it, but I just didn't. I don't know the steps. Maybe mm. you know I, I like to throw. I love throwing. The, the art of throwing is beautiful. It's throw or be thrown. Oh, dude, why did I say this? And when you see a throw too, when you see a nice throw, it's 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 beautiful. Oh, brother. Okay, I remember now. Marines. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. I went sorry. off topic. Okay, dude. Okay. We're great at this. <laughs> <laughs> so I went into the Marine Corps because. Yeah, I stopped being a little piece of shit, started wrestling, just started being a little more. When you focus on athletics, it really makes you dig into yourself a little bit on discipline because it's hard. It's easier to give up, really. So the hard thing to do is stick out a season. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Because did you did you ever quit a wrestling season? Ever, huh? Never? You were probably a- No, my sophomore year, though. Um, so my sophomore year, which probably had been the time after we got back from COVID, you know, after. Because if you were in high school when when COVID was around and, and I was a freshman. So I, to me, it was probably the best time. And I had a girlfriend at the time. So it was a good time. So I, after I would, my freshman year, I wrestled and this doesn't happen very often, but it did happen this year um, with two Buell kids. So I made it to the state finals against that kid that I was telling you four time. Okay. I made it to the state finals against him, oh. two Buell kids in the state finals. And uh, Wesley Turner actually took some pretty, oh, no pretty way. he took some pretty sweet photos of, of me and Cade wrestling in the finals. And it was pretty cool because that doesn't that doesn't happen very often. Two That's teammates, sick. and the the backstory to that is we were practicing with each other every single That's day. That's wild. It's like Vegeta Goku going. Yeah. Oh man. And then up. and then in competition, I that in the semifinals I had rolled my. Why ankle. are y'all in the same weight class? Let because that's you just what it, that's what it was. That's wow. how. That's literally. You guys are both just so dominant for your weight class. You guys destroyed everyone, huh? It, it, yeah, I had a lot of losses. He he was pretty dominant. He didn't. He probably lost maybe one time that year, mm-hmm. and then. Um, that my semifinals match, I rolled my, rolled my ankle and freaking jacked it up and it was swollen like a balloon. It was like a little, like a movie type scene type thing. Um, I roll it right and I'm ahead. I get the takedown and they, they, I, I, I get back, we go out of bounce and I come back. I try to step on my foot and the foot gives, I fall, I fall down. And you know where it's the state semifinal Saturday morning and I'm, everyone's roaring and I couldn't stand on my foot. I tried getting back up and it just gave again. I fell and then I was like, oh my goodness, I didn't know what it was. So when the coach comes over to me, Fred, and he's like, he's like, what's the deal? I was like, I can't put pressure on my foot. I think it's broke. I thought it was broke. I I, I thought it was just, it was okay. really, really jacked Swollen up. up. Um, like, like in a movie. So he comes up yeah. to me, he tells me, you're going to finish it. There's 30 seconds left. You're ahead. He's like, you're, you're going to finish it. The ref's like, you're not going to tell him. He said, you're not going to tell him. It's his choice. And so I ended up, I ended up winning the match. It was just pretty cool. 30 seconds like, left. Wait, against who? Uh, this is in the semifinals against the Marsh Valley kid. Okay. So this is what punched my ticket into the finals. So I didn't really wrestle. I mean, I did, I wrestled the match, but going into the state finals against my teammate. How how ahead were you? Oh, I was ahead. Two, two, three points. No, two, three points. It was close. It was really close. So then I let him up. He got a point. You guys did a, oh, you were in referee position. Yeah. uh, Yeah. So then. You on top. Yep. I'm on top and I'm up by three points. So he gets up now. Now it's two. All he needs is a takedown. And (laughs) I I stalled out the last, because I couldn't, I couldn't, my foot wouldn't work. My foot, it was done. And so I stalled out for maybe the last 25 seconds of the match and, uh, didn't get taken down. Nice. My you just ticket. had a stall. Yep. Don't oh. get the, t- let him, if you got the takedown, it would have went to overtime. Would have went to overtime. Yep. Oh, and, and, you and I, could, I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to wrestle. And oh. I did. And I hadn't able, I wasn't able to wrestle in the state final. So after that, Wilson, he, I, I, this, out of all the times, he's kind of, you know, everybody sees him as this, this grumpy guy, tough yeah. on everybody. He freaking, he's a big bear. He picked me up and took me to the, the medical table and everything, got me all fixed up. And then, you know, I, it was cool to me because I got to wrestle my teammate in the state finals. Like I knew that was going to happen. And 
he t- he took it easy on me, but he pinned me. <laughs> so he pinned, <laughs> he pinned me. So it's a long to make a long story short, he pinned me. Um, but it was cool because there was two Buell coaches in the in in each corner, which was his dad in the corner and then Fred in my corner. Oh wow! And it, it was and then Fred Fred was very smart about it because he said he said this he said this is for he said this is for experience he said because he, he just I guess had had belief in me that I was going to make it to the state finals. And it doesn't. The wait, state wait, state what year is this for you? Junior? 20. Yeah. Uh, no, fr- no, it's freshman year. Freshman, it's freshman year? year freshman oh my year gosh. In the state finals monster. Against my teammate. And then. Oh, wow. That's cool as hell. Then you asked if I ever quit. So to answer your question, you asked if I ever quit. So the next year we go into COVID and everything and it's a freak, you know, I, I, I'm, I guess I don't want to say I'm on top because I got second place, but I, it was, it was like a, I was on a high is the best way to put it. I was riding on a high. I was like, oh yeah, you know? So I go to school for maybe a week and then we get the text that like COVID can't, COVID is, got the school canceled oh, for like wow. two days and then it was a week and then it was two weeks and then it was till spring break and then it was the rest of the school year. That, and as a freshman, when you I, I already didn't have good grades. So You're the fucking beginning generation of that. Yeah. A beginning Whoa. generation to right go there. through a whole high school with COVID. It was freshman year too. So yeah. it, and honestly, and then I, to be honest, that's how it felt. It felt like I closed my eyes my freshman year and I wake up as my senior year. No way. Yeah. My sophomore year, we come back to school and it was all discombobulated. Like A and B days, certain kids had to go on A days. I wanted, I was again, still a knucklehead. I wanted to hang out with my friends. So I'd went A and B day. So I can hang out with my friends mm-hmm. on A and then go on B. Mm-hmm. And then I overall just quit going. Like I just quit going to school. I was like, I uh, was chasing girls around is what I was doing. I was chasing <laughs> girls around who were in college and I was a sophomore in high school. Oh my God. And they were, they were, they were <laughs> <laughs> nah, they were, she was like, it, it was dumb, but, um, yeah, no. and so I freaking quit going to school. I was like, I was like, in my head, I was like, oh, I'm just going to chase, chasing tails more important. I don't know. You're what. straight, literally, but you're kind of like, your charisma was so strong that you were creating pedophiles. No, <laughs> no, no. It doesn't, it doesn't matter the reverse sex ways though. It's okay. Like, it doesn't matter that way. No cares if boys are violated. <laughs> Lesson. So I, I guess. So okay. she freaking, and she was, yeah. So I freaking did that. And yes, if I ever quit a season, no, I, this is, this is, this is to show my love. This is to explain my love for that. I'm not a quitter too. And for wrestling, I came back my sophomore year and I kind of got kicked off the team because I hadn't like, I, I missed school. I was like 32 days to be exact of school. I missed. And I, cause I did it stupidly. I said, I was like, at the time, if you got COVID, they send you home for two weeks. And if you're sitting by somebody like us, this close <laughs> six they, foot distance. Yeah. They'd say that we say, so if you had COVID, they'd say that because I was next to you, they're sending me home for two weeks. So I decided to, Oh, if you were in the bubble. Yep. Exactly that. So I was, yeah. I, wanted to miss school. So I had said that I got COVID that I missed two weeks and then I actually got COVID. So I ended up missing like 14 days was 14 days is 28. That's, that's what you had to miss was 14 days, two weeks of school. So I ended up missing 28 of actual, like just with a, with a note is what, but it never was a note. So just, just telling them that I had COVID and then I, that I got karma because then I really got COVID. Mm. Then I missed just in a couple additional yeah. days. How sick did you get in COVID? Oh, well, I'm, a lot, from what I understand, a lot of people that get really, really sick are either like, fat. You know, I mean, yeah, fat, old, old, um, sick, sick, not healthy. You know, they don't take they care already of themselves. They have comorbidities, as one would say. Ex- exactly. Um, and 2.4 so, or something like that on average. Yeah. And the majority. I'm probably there. No, <laughs> no, no. Uh, I'm, I'm a beast through COVID though. You're, 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 you're more active than Most. probably a lot but of the But the population. thing is in standards wise, it's like, yeah, it's because we've reduced our standards that like being fat is okay. normal for Americans. Well, I guess, you know, I've, I haven't left the country, but from what I understand, they, they look at Americans like chubby. Yeah. Chubby, very a chubby country. They, they, that's what they think of us. Supposedly because of the shit we enriched wheat is supposed to be the problem is what I heard. Bread. Right. In rich, we supposed to it's like a different type of sprays that we use here that are banned in every other country. Europe, it's banned. Russia, it's banned. You can go to jail. I think you wow. sentence to death in it, uh, Russia if you cow. cost spraying this shit. But in America, there's no rules. We're just free market, baby. It makes people like it. You can make more of it. Spray it on. You know, and some people, this is one thing, is some people kind of like aren't in favor of even giving it, I don't want to say any credit to other countries like that. Mm. You know, some people are like, but I think that, I think that's cool. Like I think yeah. that, that not spread, that's healthy. That's, that's the better way of living. The thing is nope. it, it could sure put it out enriched wheat, but you need People need to no, like, like the hopefully spraying. people know. Yeah. Enriched wheat means you got, it's enriched because you have a more bountiful harvest because you sprayed pesticides on it that kill the bugs from getting to it. So then it's like you get more of a crop. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you kept more bugs away. Because the bugs so it's were enriched. It. Yeah. So you just, but you're also spraying shit on it. So there's controversial things there because, you know, I've done works with farm things here with videos and stuff. I've been on like farms where I'm like, they're spraying the shit and everyone's holding their breath. I'm recording. I'm like, yeah, should I be holding? I'm mine? like, wait, why are you guys covering your mouth? Like, oh, I mean, it's fine. We're just you know being careful. I'm like, what is that? And they're like, oh, that spray. It's like, I'm like, is, is there like bad things associated with that? They're like, oh, I mean, like some people have had like cancer from it. Uh huh. Yeah. I'm why like, are you spraying on our dude, food? Dude, you're not gonna tell me. I'm sitting here breathing <laughs> it. You freak. Yeah, but. <laughs> they're spraying it on the food. Exactly. You know what what we eat. We eat. <laughs> These people are gonna go eat it. Yeah. So it's like I don't. Think that's people should know, but they should still have the option to choose it if they still choose to do it. Yeah, and I think because like, it's not like someone's holding a gun to our head saying we can't have good normal. And I think that these things you see what I mean, but they're like popping. Up. Yeah, they're nice. <laughs> um, they're like popping up though, out of like where I want it. I think that even if we had the choice, people would still choose not. So you know, like we do have the choice. But the choice is a little bit more expensive. Like, to, yeah, to eat it depends, healthier, oh, yeah, it costs the, more. Would you say, yeah? Um, like, for instance, have you have you uh, been to the natural grocers, the new the new the new store in Twin? Natural grocers is a bougie place for sure. Yeah, it's fucking That's expensive, bougie. bro. I mean, like, well, it's bougie organic as hell. It's like targeting a specific class for sure. Yeah. But I would think you know just eating eggs, and there's like a lot of uh, that are probably like actually staple healthy foods. I'm sure some, I have a lot of diet, dietitian like friends now that have actually gone through stuff. That's pretty Some cool. of them got podcasts, but they stopped posting. They stopped uh, posting? They stopped posting a while back. They started a dietitian podcast and then it's fizzled out. That's, That's the thing. Cool. I know a lot of people who have had podcasts, even this is our, my friend, our Nelsie, let me lend this. So one of the microphones I have is from my other friend. It's all people who have podcasts that stopped. How come they stopped? Well, it's probably just gets exo- like, ex- like you just don't want to like, work. Maybe they look at it as work. And that's why I, this thing I'm trying to keep as just no, zero Con- fucks as possible. It's conversation. Complete zero fucks though. Like I just like, we'll hit the AI editor after this and let it do, 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 do. What do you think chop AI? it up. And if we screw it up, like whatever, if it's a boring part, whatever, if we are it sounding what stupid, is. whatever, <laughs> but who cares? Yeah. It's like, whatever. Yeah. I, I feel like if you have a more whatever mindset and it's like just a fun thing. You know, you still haven't answered my question. Oh, oh the Marines, my God. The Marines, the Marines. Oh, shit. Where did I end it? <laughs> I don't even remember. Yeah, Anyways, yeah, I was a shithead when wrestled eventually. Wrestling saved my life. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, listen. So, yeah, listen no, but uh, I, getting discipline is a quality thing. But originally, I, I became the senior class president, oh, and wow. I shouldn't have because I had a 1.7 GPA. Cumulative. Oh, no, that's not <laughs> graduating. right. I'm probably not retired than mine. I didn't think I was going to graduate. I was ditching school just like you two. And I was a little gangbanger dude, but wannabe Sudeño. Oh, <laughs> not in view. I was <laughs> allegedly tagging places up left and right. <laughs> I was a problem kid. It wasn't a phase mom. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, eventually, you know, getting into wrestling and stuff. And I was like, I fucked up my GPA. I'm going to, uh, what am I going to do after high school? You know what I mean? Then I'm, how am I going to get a scholarship or anything? I'm not, I'm not going to be able to do anything. Thing. I'm going to join the fucking military. Let's go do it. I went and signed up for the Air Force with my buddy Gage Kliegel. We both went to the recruiter. And then they told me that they weren't hiring. That they weren't hiring? Yeah, they weren't hiring. So then I was like, what the fuck? And then I submitted a little pamphlet that I saw in a magazine for a free t-shirt from the Marines. <laughs> and next thing I know, there's a guy visiting me at school. He's like, hey, what's up, man? Here's your shirt. Those guys he's, are always pretty cool, too. <laughs> yeah, they, when cool you talk dude. to them, they're pretty cool dudes. <laughs> Jason T. Lamb. We buy Jason T. Jason T. And he was like, so, I think he was a Jerome boy, country uh, wrestler guy, too. And I was like in the middle of wrestling season. And we started talking and he, we did some fun little exercise shit. And, like, and he what? said, you're qualified. He told He's yeah. like, stack these blocks <laughs> like, like this. And they're all crooked. He's like, good enough. Man, Eat this crayon. It tells you you're good. <laughs> that's a, that's a common meme for Marines, crayon okay. eaters. Why? Because that's like the thing for Marines from the other branches. We all roast each other. Wow. Everyone says Marines are like stupid. Uh, muscles are required. Uh, wait, intelligence, not essential. <laughs> I that is that what it is? M A R I N E. Yeah, M A R I N E. Yes. I'm validating yes. this right now. Yes. How do you spell Marine? No, I was I just wanted to show the same uh, page. Tone Tavern, 1775, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. All right. <laughs> All right, but uh, yeah, I ended up liking him. He liked me. He's like, come on, dude, be Marine. Marines are badass. And I was like, dude, I'm down. Let's do it. 
And he was crazy hardcore fucking combat vet, dude. Hardcore. He got like a Valor uh, Navy Achievement Medal for I, the Valor symbol on badges means that you got it from combat. It has a V right on the badge. And he had footage. And he oh. would, I won't say more. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. But Marines would turn you into a brainwashed killer, dude. In uh, the Marine Combat Training Center, we would watch this m- video. Oh, let me fucking put the song on, guys, to put you in the in the zone of what this was like. Counting bodies like sheep to the rhythm of the war drum. <laughs> and we're just looking at fucking here counting. This is what it's, this is what this is the indoctrination process to be a fucking straight killer. Everything you say in the Marine Corps is kill, kill, kill. It, yeah, we would chant blood makes the grass grow. <laughs> blood makes the grass grow. <laughs> yeah, surprising not too many people become crazy serial killers. Oh, yeah, so we'd go. This hardcore ass music. And we'd see nothing but like 9 11 happening, crashing into the tower. And we'd be like, have you forgotten? Oh, wow, they're, they're the getting t- you ready. They would they're show the you tower off. and fall down and like, they will pay. And then it's like us with tons of guns and the tanks and stuff. And it's like in blood. And then it's like people getting killed. This is pretty serious. <laughs> and then we're like, let's fuck them up. Get you all amped up. Yeah. They know just the target too. Young boys that are ready to fight, dude. Yeah. yeah. That's why wrestling such a good outlet. They know what they're doing. <laughs> There's that energy in us. That's like warrior. Yeah. This is a warrior energy can tap into men. Yeah. At least fucking men with testosterone. <laughs> and men with st- and men with testosterone. So anyways, uh, I ended up signing a piece of paper and got sent to the Marine Corps. And would you say? I love my homies, hated the work. Okay. All right. That's how, that's how it was, yeah. My, you make the best homies, but the fucking job sucks ass eventually. It becomes a bunch of fuck, fuck games of discipline. I was a helicopter dude. This is my thingy and my boys on the... Wow. Sea Stallion, and we'd fly Ospreys everywhere doing uh, helicopter support missions, rigging up crash things, stuff like that. How how long were you, did you serve for, I should say? Four years. Four years? Yep, 2016. Is when you went in? Is when I got out. So I got out 2016 and went to school, and I was like the old guy at school. <laughs> I was, you like, the old I was like 24 school. going to college with a bunch of like 19-year-olds. <laughs> and you went to CSI? I went to CSI first, yeah, and then I went to Portland State. Why did you want to go to Portland State? Uh, I love trees. And I was like, I could have went to University of Southern California Cinematic Ooh. Arts Program, which is pretty rare right here. And I turned <laughs> that down to go to Portland State because I'm like, I love trees and nature and I want to make nature videos. And, that's, and that was probably the place to do it, huh? It was so beautiful, but the vibes didn't vibe with me very, very, very long. Fair I'm enough. too much of a country boy and country boys aren't welcome there. <laughs> if you have any country boy ideology whatsoever that you hold on to, you'll be a Trump person. No. You like mood, you like fucking hardworking Americans, the American flag. You like boots and barbecues and country dancing and a cowboy hat. They're not gonna like you there. No, yeah, I, you want a gun? They're not gonna like you there. I hate me. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, dude. So, and I was at the most liberal college, like in America, Portland State University, in the film program where all the artsy kids go. And I had a girl in my class whose legal name was changed to Princess Unicorn. Oh my goodness. Dude, there are f- some weird people. Some weird. They say Unicorn. the motto of Portland is keep it weird. And there's druggies shooting up heroin everywhere. Yeah. Like, that's weird. That's I mean, as weird as it gets. <laughs> I lived in my van for a year, dude, saving up to buy my first camera, this nice camera, so I can get TLC gigs. When I met you at, at the Badger Den, you, ha- you, you were driving up your van. I, I was that. living in that van, you were too. In the van? Yeah. And that's what I got. I saved up to get my, this first camera. This one, yep. I saved up for this one because I saw on job sites that. This exact camera was the one that they use on TLC jobs. And they would look for camera operators all over the country sometimes, you know, that could run that camera. I looked at YouTube videos for it and stuff, and I just did not feel confident that I could say I did stuff on that. So then I saved up money by living in my van and bought that camera. (sighs) And then I made videos for clientele I already had made that I had on my local clients, really. And I made it with the cameras. I posted it as credits. This video was made with this camera. And I would use that as my experience when applying for jobs for TLC. Wow. And I got a jobs and I was working on like reality shows and stuff. That's freaking awesome. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. And then went on to documentary after that. And now I'm making my own name in documentary. That's the thing. I don't want to work for TLC. I want to have director Jason Turner on a Netflix original film. 
It will be. It yeah, will be. It will. I'm going to. You're going to. Yes, you will. You will. <laughs> My level's getting up there where I can, I'm like a one man powerhouse of making great stories. And I'm learning so much. This CSI Cheer documentary series has leveled me up like, bop, 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 because I learn each one. I get better and better. And this one's going to be the best one. And I'm like getting to the point where I, I watch Netflix documentaries so often so I can see what makes them so good. Get some valuable insights from them. Like how do they make the cuts? What kind of footage do I need to get to be able to tell this exact story like this? And I, it'd be easier with more people, more camera ops, but I can get into intimate places as one person that sneaks in. Yeah. It's more a traditional verite filmmaker style. Cause back in the day in like the sixties and stuff there, and even through the nineties, there was really famous filmmakers that shot documentary Verite cinema style, where it was like what I do. That's why I named my company Verite Studios because it's like a tribute to Verite, and it's Spanish Verite to see you. So it's like a double tribute, you know, cool. observation. <laughs> and yeah, so I'm like kind of going for that vibe. I think a little more artisty. Want my stamp on it. I guess a little pride comes with your work. Your own, yeah. Your own <laughs> and it's like as you keep accomplishing tasks, you just keep aiming higher. Uh huh. I thought that's what the goal right there back too, in the yeah. day, 10 years ago, if I was doing what I'm doing now, I would be like, you did it, bro. You did. You were there. Hey, you're not done yet. <laughs> Job's not done. But once you're there, you're like, this isn't what I want more. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it's great. Cause if you don't have that fire to achieve something, I feel like your soul dies a little. And you would be what, what some call a bump on a log. <laughs> yeah, yep. All right. Uh, oh yeah. I'm telling, wait, have I finished my story? <laughs> All right. Can I ask you a question now? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Oh, tell me about your training schedule go, go, getting to state. How was, I don't know what Fred's training program is like. My day, it was vigorous as fuck. I'm sure the Bartlett's keep that tradition alive. Very true. Uh-huh. <laughs> so yes, what was do. it like? Okay. Um, well, it's it, it changed this year, this uh, 2024 season, 2020, 2023, 2024 season. But the training schedule was tough. You know, it, it was consisted of a lot, a lot, a lot of like, I guess obviously hard work's kind of vague. Um, early mornings, a lot, a lot of early mornings. Mm. And uh, give me an example of just a, give me the hardest week. Is there like a hell week? Christmas break practices. And I didn't miss not a single one. Okay. How does that go? <clears throat> well, it, it's, it, it goes in series, kind of goes in waves. Okay. So the first three weeks you wake up at 5 a.m., <laughs> 5 a.m. for practice, the first three weeks of practice. And he kind of does that kind of like, to test you, you know, like if, if you can make it through the first three weeks of practice, you can make it through Christmas break, through the whole season, you could do it all. Um, oh, so is the, does it start in December? Starts November, the first day. So they have, they have this rule. There's a lot of weird rules in high school. Okay. Um, they have this rule that you can't start practicing like a fish. You can't hold official, yeah, official. wrestling practices up until like November 14th. I think November oh, okay. 14th, the oh, first day. I think it was like that for my age too. Okay. Yeah. So the, the, he, and he holds like just little like open mats, but not official practices, you know, which you could do that. Mm -hmm. He, uh, so it starts off then in November with, uh, for the first three weeks of just rigor, I want to say rigorous. Like I'm sure I'm sure, excuse me. I'm sure the Marine Corps. No, no, no. Marine Corps physical. The hardest part's the mental being away, being screamed at, getting your brain taken away from you as you stare and stand in position for hours, never having a piece of your own character come out. Except for when you're hiding with your bunkmates at night when you're trying to go to sleep and you guys have little moments together. That sounds that sounds pretty tough, right there. It, but it's the psychological. The you physical, can't be yourself. You can't be yourself. Yeah, you can be yourself in wrestling all you want. No, no, but, but the, in the physical Marines. is demanding oh. in wrestling. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Wrestling is extremely physically taxing. Oh yeah, and mentally I think too. it's more so than Marine Corps boot camp. Okay. Well, I didn't, you know, that I didn't know. So that's, that's, that's crazy. Just, you just got to run a lot, <laughs> a lot of running extra, but you guys run like 10 miles to miracle, miracle or something. We do. So you guys could do it. Everyone. I feel like if you get through a wrestling season, you can get through the Marine Corps. And there have been a couple people like, I don't know if you know, AJ Dominguez and like a couple of guys like Adam Mings, just guys that were, were yeah, were, army and Navy they're right now. Yeah. Yeah. Those guys, uh, Adam is Jack. He's fucking huge. <laughs> he's dude. Just he's huge. You know, he's got ab squares that are does. just like crunching his down back his is body. Freaking huge. That Good was, job. Adam. Yeah, yeah, that, he needs it. He does. He, needs it. he was a little dorky before. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, got him missing too. <laughs> he, listen, and you know what, you know, the, it's the story behind that. I, uh, those guys were my, or my brothers, uncle, oh, there, there still are, but the reason that had happened, I don't, and obviously I don't know if he's comfortable with me sharing the story, but I'm going to anyways, <laughs> we were at, we were, he, he went, like I said, uh, like I was telling your significant other, 
um, we used to, they used to throw parties. And yeah. so Adam happened to show up at one of those parties and I had blacked out. I was freaking an eighth grader and I didn't, I couldn't handle my liquor or alcohol. So I blacked out before it even happened to see it happen. Oh, well, okay. my, my uncles and brothers, their brothers, they yeah. were fighting and Adam decided, you know, Adam being the good guy that he is, he decided he'd break it up. Well, he tripped and hit his mouth on a spigot, a water spigot. Um, <laughs> he tripped cause he was trying to break the fight up, right? I think he got pushed. <laughs> okay. He, that's different than tripped. Listen, listen I, I, no, not pushed like in, in the altercation. Cause he's oh, trying, like, not, okay. like, not like somebody, collateral. Yeah. Collateral. Exactly. Like he, he, had he not stepped in, he wouldn't, that wouldn't have happened. Yeah. But he, he decided that he'd break up the fight between the brothers and I, I wasn't there, but I'm pretty positive it was tripped or. It, it, it was, okay, it was yeah. collateral. So he fell and hit his tooth yeah. on the freaking... Fell, I should say. Better better way to put it, fell. He but, fell, hit his damn tooth, but it was because he was freaking involved being in that. Being a little hero. Yeah, being a little hero. And oh, I've, and I've, I've known Adam since... That's the kind of man I want serving for my military. Yeah, dude. yep. We need, I, a lot of, we need a lot of little studs that are good guys out there. Uh-huh. And he's tough, too. One tough yeah. motherfucker, too. Just submit. Honestly, I feel like the wrestling program, we can just, you know, build an assembly line for the military. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We yeah. got those people out there. I feel good. Actually, some wrestlers are assholes. There's some people that just like literally. Have you seen the videos where they just bam punch people mid match? Whoa, yeah, I've seen. I've like, seen, I've that, seen yeah. that happen actually at one of our meets in uh, Nevada. There's a Nevada one. Which one? Spring Creek. Spring Creek. At Spring Creek, for my in my senior year, I had some kid punch you somebody, and pu- they it got turned into a huge ordeal. Yeah. Um, that's sore losers. <laughs> yeah, dude. What the hell? Just wrestle. Yeah, just wrestle. This isn't boxing. This is not, that's about as close as it gets to, to fighting. Loser. Oh, dude. One time I snapped this kid and I put him in a... Were you... you squeeze Front headlock? Yeah, and you squeeze the neck, side of the neck and the arm. Oh, head and arm. Head and arm. Head and arm. Yeah. Head and arm. yeah. <laughs> snapped him into a head and arm, dragged him out, and I was squeezing that baby tight. And choking him up. I was choking him. Hardcore. I was choking him. and But it was legal. Yeah. And he starts tapping on the mat, tapping, Matches tapping, over. tapping. And the referee comes and pulls me up, and he gets up crying, pissed off. What the <laughs> fuck? He was choking me. He was and the coach came out all pissed off, and they restarted us. It didn't count out. He tapped out. He should have lost, right? Yeah. Because I went over to Anthony, and he was like, it's legal. Like, you're good. Yeah. And I was like. Kids tapped. They get put in the He was pissed. Then he started headbutting me hard. And I fucking, I was fucking put, put the work you on him. You ended the match. Yeah, I just beat him. I destroyed him. I remember I, I remember when you know you can break someone's soul in a wrestling match. You yeah. ever feel where they just start like kind of like yeah. <laughs> going limp? Breaking, breaking. That's yeah, they, just, they just give up. You know they give up. Yeah. I had a similar story. It was uh, the Bearcat. You guys do the Bearcat still? It's uh, <laughs> Jerome... And uh, it bound it bounced between Jerome and uh, the Bruins, tournament? Twin tournament? Falls High School. Or yeah, a duel. It was a tournament. The Bearcat. It would bounce between Jerome, the Cats, you know Tigers, yeah, and, and uh, Bruins, Twin Falls Bears. Bears. Yeah. So that's why they called that because they would take turns hosting it every year. They might have got done doing it, maybe. Anyways, the Buell Invitational is still strong, right? Oh, it's very strong. Yeah. The Buell Invitational was the shit. I feel like that was <laughs> that to was me. The, yep. I, we might be biased, but I was like, that was the most important tournament. Like, it was huge. Yep. Oh, it was. And that's <laughs> that's that's what Fred always said it was too. I remember if you got to compete, and there, I remember them telling us like my freshman year, like a couple of us, like three of us, got to wrestle to Buell Invite is varsity, and they said he oh he doesn't he doesn't let this happen a whole lot. Like oh he he doesn't let freshmen <laughs> wrestle varsity at oh, the Buell really? at the Buell tournament either. He usually sends them to to the the JV tournament and just you know you're right it was it's a special tournament like yeah. that right there is the one that tells you if you do pretty good at that tournament that's gonna that that'll tell you how how you're gonna do at state because I think all but like three teams I love go. Moretto's clothes Moretto oh yeah he's oh, still yeah. pumping he's still, them out there he's still pumping he them out makes there. some cool he's still, stuff he's, he, he does yeah he's, and the view invitation was my favorite stuff yeah, I, I love I, my favorite shirts and stuff I don't have them anymore yeah I uh you know I never I never uh can had the funds to buy them. It's a lot cooler when you so win you them. So you just checked it? No, it's a, lot cooler. it's a lot cooler when you win them. Did you just see a bag somewhere? No, not, not from Moretto, but it's a lot cooler no, when you No, not win stealing them. from him, from somebody oh, who bought one of two no. sides out with <laughs> the bleachers. No, because they got their school, they got their last name on it. Oh, you're right. Yeah. With weight class. The weight class. Oh, yeah. I ain't no one sixty. You, you gotta know? find some family member. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so horrible. Hopefully no kids, listen. <laughs> no current wrestlers are just like, good idea. Yeah, they're like, oh, Do not do that. It's all about respect. <laughs> 
Yeah, because then you run like into, you, you do it to the wrong wrestler, you get your oh, ass kicked. <laughs> yeah, and, or you just go it. straight to jail and your wrestling career is over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, well, that's, if, that's, if, if it was me, I catch somebody getting my stuff, they, it ain't going to be a very good... Uh, straight to straight to prison. Yep. Straight uh, to jail. You know that like, dictator one? Yeah. <laughs> like, you surprisingly, straight to jail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then... Uh, what was I talking about before that? Oh, uh, I had a story like you with my ankle. So I was at the Bearcat tournament. The Bearcat tournament, uh, it was in Jerome that year. And I had already, I think I had already lost once. I was in consolation bracket. Excellent. So I, you got to fucking work longer in the consolation bracket to sucks ass. But I still wanted a medal so bad because I hadn't got a high school medal yet. You know, and I <laughs> yeah. was like, I had not wrestled all high school. Junior year, I jumped in and then I quit because I got a job at McDonald's. And I was like, I'm going to go work. <laughs> and I, I, I feel like it was such a bitch move. I should have just stayed in wrestling. Why did I go? Why did I feel like I had to go fucking work night shifts all the time? Stupid. Oh, McDonald's night shifts. character. Right? My, McDonald's character? night shifts were the worst too, dude. <laughs> they were, you freaking my, I was breaking out in pimples everywhere from the grease. <laughs> Getting a little chunkier. Are you sure it wasn't teen, just your teenage years? It, it, maybe. But I, maybe that started it, it, it while much, I was around the greasers. It very much could have been that day yeah, too. But the timing was weird that I was eating McDonald's all the time and around the greasers. And yeah. I was like starting to out and you become what you anyways eat senior year i just i decided i'm gonna go every day i'm gonna do i'm gonna do this and wrestle and so i go to the bear cat i'm like i don't want a fucking medal i lose i get a consolation round i'm like you can still win if you win you get third place because mm-hmm. the championship in the winner's bracket they're battling for first and second and you get dropped down to a lower bracket if you lose one if it's a double elimination tournament and you i'm explaining for everybody yeah, you're good, you're good, you're good. <laughs> and if uh if you win the entire bracket, the final match is between third and fourth place. And yep. third place is the shit that's like podium. Yeah. So <laughs> do you, and you get a, you're a winning a whole ass like bracket yourself too. So it's cool. And uh, yeah, so I had to beat this kid to go to the championship for third and fourth. And I fucked my ankle up on it. And I had to, uh, I had to take him down. I had to take him down to be able to win <laughs> at the end. And I did take him down. And Steven's grandpa, Bill, he wrapped, wrapped my ankle up afterwards and was just like, I took him down. This is when I felt his soul break because we were both tired. I took him down, got control of him, and he didn't even try to escape anymore. It was he done. just like it kind was of done. folded. He, he, he gave up. We had like 10 seconds left and he just gave up. He didn't even try to fight. He was already crying. <laughs> <laughs> he was already crying. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that's <laughs> one key moment. I remember a guy giving up like, oh, I can just sit here and he hold on him. to him. Broke him. Yeah. <laughs> I just hold on to him. He's not going to, I don't even have to really work hard anymore. And uh, he tricks me. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Pulls a <the> switch. <laughs> he pins you. Oh, I can ease up right here. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Reverse. He wins. <laughs> Gets you in. Match over. Yeah. It would probably be a tie. One point for reversal, right? <laughs> one point, two point reversal, one point escape. One point, one point escape, two point reversal. Yep. Yeah, so he would win. Oh yeah, but you didn't win. <laughs> and I went up and I remember I was really proud because Bill wrapped my ankle, was helping me wrap my ankle up and stuff. And he was like, oh, there's a fighter. He's like, there's a, there's a wrestler in, turn, in Turner yet or something. So give me a compliment of like, he, you got potential to be a wrestler. And did, then that's did, why I was like, I can fucking win these. Did Wes, was Wes taking photos? Wes, Wesley, I don't know, Wes, um, Wesley West. Yeah, no, I didn't was get Was he taking uh, photos at the time? No? No, I didn't get photos. I wasn't getting photos at that time. Oh. He's kind of sparked into uh, photography in his new era, I think recently. Well, for me, it seems recently. I think after I went to the Marine Corps, probably, he started doing that for Keisha's, Keisha's upbringing in high school, I think. He might have started for her in middle school, I think. I'm not too sure. I know he was always into photography when he was like a young young lad as well. A young lad. <laughs> yeah, because he used to have photography books all the time back when we were kids. That's pretty cool. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, he didn't take pictures from me. I didn't get a picture pictures <laughs> like that. So motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's all good. I don't care. I was embarrassed anyways, dude. Did you like it when you're like it, did your girlfriend ever go to your freaking matches? Uh like when she was my girlfriend? Or Whoever, before. if you ever had a girlfriend that would come to your matches, would you be like, "Oh shit"? Listen, my my, my parents never came to mind. To be honest, like they yeah. ne- never. And, and honestly, I I never played. I started playing high school football when I was a junior, but they had came to one, my mom came to one event. She never came to any of the state tournaments. Still, still, like I'm done now. But she didn't go. No football games. Um, the one she went to senior night when I was a junior. That was the only time she went and watched. And then senior night when mm-hmm. I was a senior. So two things out of the the many years that I wrestled. But yeah. It's, I think it might be, a, I have, I feel like I have, I can relate to similar experiences with you a lot, but I think it's better because then you get strength from putting your mind onto things that grow you even beyond. 
Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like you can you get inspiration from, from people like fucking Goggins. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then exactly. You realize, and then you tap into a damn, my book is going to be awesome. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Look at all the things I'm going to overcome. Exactly. But, exactly. Yeah. It's just, you're just going to, it's just a better chapter for your story. Cause you're like, damn, this motherfucker. Yeah. This motherfucker was a badass mm-hmm. he, with all this. And he still made it. That's one thing that I, that's one thing that like, I don't necessarily say I tell myself, but it's going to be cool because you know, like. I don't know what's necessarily in front of me, but, and I don't, I don't, I'm, I don't talk to my dad at all. And you know, we don't, we don't talk at all. He lives, he lives in Cabo, Mexico. And I haven't talked to him since I was like five. That's probably the last time I seen him too. Uh, it's going to be cool when my kid gets to, gets to be curious one day and ask me, uh, and this, and this is going to be here too. So it's going to be pretty cool when he asked me, you know, what was your dad like, or just yeah. anything, you know? And then I get to say, well, I didn't have one, but then, just the stories, you know, stories that I'm going to be able to have to tell and all these through, you know, cause the career path that I'm, I'm going to choose mm. through the cool stories I'm going to be able to tell. That's, that's going to be exciting. And then he's going to be like, Oh man, yeah. he didn't have a dad. He's, he was tough, you know, just all these things. You yeah. Know? The trick I think is to make sure you don't carry on the demons from the, from broken times, you know, from right. broken people. Yep. Don't carry them with you. Don't, cause I think it, maybe for a lot of people, it'd be so easy to say, I'm going to be better. Yeah, I'm gonna be better than what I, than the parents that I had. And then most times you become, better. and then you don't realize yeah, you're yeah, becoming yeah. it because you're were made cold because your parents were cold, or you were made hard because your parents were harder. Even who knows how ever, humans are so complex. Breaking the cycle. It's weird how some people in adversity can crumble and some people can rise. And I wonder, is it capable for everybody, or is there some type of spirit someone has to have? Oh, it's. I want to say it's capable for everybody. To be completely honest, like. How bad do you want it for yourself? I can tell you one Maybe thing. you're saying that from the perspective of someone who has that spirit, though. Okay. All right. You're right. <laughs> um, well, maybe, maybe put this is, this is one thing that I'd say. Maybe put yourself in that spirit. Because if you don't have that, what, what do you mean by spirit? Like, yeah. what exactly? What, what, what do you, when you say spirit, like, explain to me what you mean. Like, like yeah. spirit in terms okay. of like, we'll go out and get something that they desire. Or? Let me give you an example. Okay. So I was telling you about Viktor Frankl's book earlier, uh-huh. Man's Search for Meaning. Holocaust psychiatrist survivor, psychiatrist Jew who went through the, he went through Auschwitz and through a lot of things and survived it all and wrote wrote a book, Man's Search for Meaning. It's incredible. Highly recommend it. I gave it a five stars. I don't give books five stars. I only give books five stars in my Goodreads reading rating system if I'm guaranteed going to revisit that throughout my life. If it's not going to be like that, I don't give it a five star. If it's just really good, I give it four. If I'm probably never going to read it again. But it was like, I don't regret reading it. Three stars. <laughs> if I regret reading it, I might, I might feel like I wasted some time reading that <laughs> two. And then I fucking hate that book. One. <laughs> done. That's my rating system, just so everyone knows. Because okay, I'm good, harsh. Irvina that's, hates that I rate harshly. That's a pretty good rating system. She gives everything five stars. I'm like, are you doing <laughs> that for the author? Or uh, mine's a personal rating system. So I can scroll and see which books I love. Anyways, uh, Man Stretcher Meaning, Victor Frankl. People would, there's a term in the camps that they would call, it was um, running for the fence where people would run for the electric fence and (laughs) kill themselves quickly like that. And a lot of people found themselves in points where they didn't know what to even live for. Their family probably got pointed. They would just march into a line. And if you look like you could work, you were able-bodied, nothing wrong with you. They do this point, go that way. And that was to to the labor camps. And if you didn't look like you were going to provide, you were... Maybe a woman, a child, even a weak person, they send do this, you go to the left, where you become the smoke in the sky, as the people would say it, and you go get cremated. And people would lose like all their loved ones. They didn't think the war would end, years would pass, and they didn't know what to live for, and they would run for the fence and just kill themselves because it would be less miserable. People can even limp. If you're the one guy like tore his fucking like ACL pretty much and had to just keep working through it because if you look like you're hurt at all straight to the freaking crematory it's, you get straight to the gas chambers Auschwitz was the worst because it had like seven of them they, they were, it was a miracle because this guy eventually got transported to a, a camp that didn't have a gas chamber so if they were going to gas you they had to transport you so there's like a little bit more hope you know yeah <laughs> you like are like wow death isn't right there staring at me exactly. in the face every day right there. and if I fuck up they just send me there but um I'm very, I don't, I'm very interested. In, like, I don't want to say, say it like that. History, it very, it very much so interests me. Yeah, and that's that, where it came from. That right there, like that specific time period, I find myself like very, very interested in that. It's, yeah. it's, Check that book out, dude. Okay. That book. That's that a good one. And he, he really psychoanalyzes. You would really appreciate it. It's pretty short. 
<laughs> Fucking what do you care? Well, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm in the, I, yeah, I'm I can in, only read up to 60 pages. Well, I'm in the process of reading a book right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you finish it, Mike Tyson, Undisputed. Oh, that's yeah. The, is it good? Is it his uh, memoir or something? I think it. I think it is. Is it his book? It's, it's his book. Yeah, he, he's he's writing it. And oh, it's it's pretty good. I didn't like, know how is it new? I think it's new. I want. I, mean, I didn't know he had a book that came out. Uh, it's a good book. That's oh, all I gotta say. I haven't yeah. finished it yet. I love memoirs. I on actually on the way to California on the on the freaking book. book. No, I freaking read it. Real book. Oh, real book. That's in mind. Um, so it's you don't it's like the, you don't like the audio book. It. No, I listen to a lot of pod. Like I listen to a lot yeah. of podcasts. So I think that. And I, I know it's, it's honestly, it's a, it's a proven fact that, that, you know, reading is good for your mind. Uh, yeah. So Just I stay literate. Yeah, exactly. Stay literate, stay sharp. Keep you sharp. Exactly. But to consume information, I think it's faster to do it audio. Oh yeah. hundred percent. So I read, I read a lot, but I also listen to a lot more because I like to turn through it at the gym. I'm turning through a uh, rise and fall to third Reich. And that's a, like a 60 hour book, dude. And the, I've done bigger books than that. The Gulag Archipelago. Those are huge books. They're like. Giant encyclopedias in real life, Holy in God. volumes too, and I just turn through. I'll go sixty hours down just at the gym when I'm showering, when I'm driving, and eventually sixty hours add up, and I finished a fucking remarkable classic piece of nonfiction that really teaches me a lot about our history. And I have this grand new change of perspective for me. It's enriching, you know. And you go, "Holy shit, I didn't know any of this." It, it, it blows power. your mind, dude. Knowledge is power. It really is. It really is. And I think people eventually, as you as you just grow older, this is my experience. You just start to realize how important history is. Understanding who we are. You ever watch Attack on Titan? Attack on Titan. I, remember, I actually, I, I got it uh, mixed up for Remember the Titans. No, Attack on Titan. <laughs> no, uh, no, explain it to me. Edin! <laughs> <laughs> it's explain. anime, dude. Yeah, I love anime. Well, the, there's, a, the, there's a theme to the thing where they, they don't know their past. The Titans, there's like these giant humanoid Titans outside of the walls that they live in. They live in a trap wall in Alexandria, I think is what it's called. And outside the walls are Titans at Rome and they eat people. And so they're hiding in fear in this walled village. The thing is the whole plot of the whole story, there's a main character who's involved in this, but there it's finding out what the fuck are these Titans? Why are they here? What is all this? Where are we from? Who are our people? And that's a really fun question to dive into wow. for our own history. Who are we? You, it'll lead you to journeys of even reading the Bible, learning about all the most sacred an ancient text of what people said from back in the day of what we are, who we are, where we came from. And some of it has a whole, I don't know, it holds meaning now. That's one thing as I've gotten mm. older oh, yeah. and I've started, I still, I, I do, I respect Christ, a mm. higher being, whatever, whatever it may be for all the different people listening or just in general all around the world, you know, yeah. that, uh, the, some, for some, it's a law for yeah. some, it's God. And, you know, just, it's the same universe though, you know? Yeah, exactly. You know, Allah is literally in the same, they talk, mentioned Mary and Jesus and they mentioned Adam and Eve in the Quran. You know, honestly, and so I, <laughs> I, like, um, in lieu of what I'm saying, I don't. It's angel Gabriel from the old Testament that talks to, uh, Muhammad. You, you've Prophet read the Bible? Muhammad, bless be his name. <laughs> so you, you, you've read, you've read, you've read the Bible? I've read the Bible. I'm not fully through the New Testament. I'm going to turn and slow, but I love it. I love the New Testament. I've read the Old Testament. I read the Torah. I read the Bhagavad Gita. I read the Torah. Uh, I read the Torah, the Dhammapada. And what else is in there? I think that might be it do you for see, sacred texts. Do you see uh, one thing that I've started to see as I've gotten older, and this is why I respect it so much now, is there's truth in the – because there's the, – what it is, is from what I understand is the stories that were passed down for so long until they were finally written down. And like, you know, you know, like they were, they were stories after stories after stories. Well, the Veda texts are the most ancient literature we have. The Veda texts were written by sages, ancient sages from thousands and thousands of years ago. It's the oldest literature we have as humans that was written down. It's the Veda text. It makes up the, the Gitas. Bhagavad Gita is one of the Gitas and that's what Hinduism is. Hinduism is the oldest, is the oldest religion. And they were, these ancient sages would meditate on soma juice, the juice from the moon. And a lot of old his, all of this history from these people making religions. Makes sense. They're fucking tripping. <laughs> <laughs> they're tripping. They're all tripping, dude, on something. Like, look, they're drinking some psychedelics and meditating. There's and there's got to be some truth to it, though. But the one thing I think about is how the pineal gland is in fact psychedelic in itself, in our head. And it's the uh, only part of our brain that's centralized it, it, it's a the set it's sent it, people call it the seed of the soul and it doesn't have a left or right hemisphere and that's where like a lot of people just say 
DMT secrets from out of that. I'm butchering this because I fucking suck at reiterating information. But DMT secrets, you know what night dimethyltryptamine is? It's DMT, right? That's exactly yeah, DMT, what it is. You know what that does though? It like fucks you up. <laughs> so it's the most powerful psychedelic. And most people who take DMT, like ayahuasca and stuff, say, Have you, have claim you taken they, them? I've done it. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. And I've had crazy, like, crumb out crying, like, no. I know the universe. <laughs> Holy cow. But that's probably also what has sparked my interest in a lot of this research as well. But so the pineal gland, right? One thing that's crazy Genesis right. chapter two, I think, verse 26. <laughs> You'll find it. It's where Israel becomes Jacob. And he gets to see God. He goes to a place called Peniel. He goes to Peniel and sees God's face there. And that's and uh, what's crazy about Peniel, I was like, why did he say Peniel? And they named the, the gland that gives you TMT where you go and see God, Peniel. Those seem like very similarly rooted words in their ancient roots. Because when you deal with dead languages, like uh, what they found at uh, Qumran, where sort of the Dead Sea Scrolls were found along the, in the Dead cave. Sea. In that cave. Yeah. They they really have to take it back to it's like a um, not a Syrian uh, the ancient Syrian language it's uh, Hebrew? I was, I was, Hebrew, it's right? not it's it's not Hebrew it's it's like ancient Hebrew it's a a, a, Syri- a Kyrian. <laughs> let me look it up I really want to know this I fuck it the fuck this thing up every time ancient Hebrew language it's probably the language Jesus spoke I think is what people speculate a lot wow. That's kind of cool how it's like translated to English. And then now that you're, you're saying that's, that's probably what he spoke. Yeah. I think that's, I mean, uh, let's see. What the fuck? How do I find this dude? What do we <laughs> call it? Ar- archaic Hebrew. Uh, ancient Syrian language. That's probably it. Let's see. Aramaic. Oh, that's uh, what it is. Aramaic. A little bit simpler. Oh, I always fuck Aramaic. that one up. Aramaic. So, yeah, they brewed it to the ancient Aramaic and ancient Sumerian ty- types and stuff. So the language of what the words that are translated really matters a lot. And when it comes to those old books, you following me? Yeah, I'm following. Yeah. <laughs> no, religion. Is- what were we saying that for? Oh, but the World War II history is really important because the ram- ra- the ramifications of those that event leading to the Cold War, leading to everything is playing out in today. You really understand modern politics and our situation with nuclear arms and all, treaties and BRICS and NATO and all this a lot better if you can actually dive, get a good grasp. And you'll have a better understanding of totalitarian governments and communism and the ramifications of what consequences of, uh, you know, censorship, because that's what Hitler did. He really got a hold. The re- When he really started taking power was when he got a hold of the newspapers. So a lot of Germans did not support Hitler, but he got control of the newspapers and got to put his own narrative out there. He got his message out. He got to silence the other messages is actually what it was. He was silencing all the other ideologies. And so you got to be cautious for people who want to silence other ideologies. Left wing. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Fucking Portland. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Waza. It's crazy. Honestly though. Yeah. You're welcome. I'm I'm indoctrinating you early. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Okay. Oh, dude. So before a match for, for fights, I mean, you've been in the smokers too, so you fought, yeah. you struck. How did you, how do you calm your nerves? For me, dude, I would be yawning so much. What? You'd I, be yawning I, before? I yawn. No. Before wrestling, I'd, oh, I gotta yawn, dude. No. It's like yawns take over me. I don't know why. It's weird. It's like a, my body's you reaction. Gotta sleep. <laughs> yeah, it's my body's reaction to nerves though. I get nervous in my gut and it starts making me yawn. What do you tell yourself? Like, I what, just what start getting jacked up and trying to be like, I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> just tell, and that's what I right. think I got too, too wired up. So, oh, so people who don't know, Julian was in my corner in my boxing match last year. That was last year, right? Two years ago. Two years ago. Oh, time is ticking by. Was it two years? Yeah, because you didn't do it this last year, did you? This, oh, this, it already happened again? Some, yeah, it already happened oh again. I did it. I did it. I did it again. How'd it go? Not good. I, uh, oh, did you lose? I, well, well, I don't want to say I lost. I rolled my ankle out. I sprained my ankle <sighs> three weeks before I was sparring. Uh, a kid in Buell, his name's Fabi Pierce. Just uh, so I was sparring him, and I rolled my ankle, and it was just me and him at the Badger Den, and it was bad. It was really no, bad, man. You and, and your stupid ankles, oh, dude. It's the same one too. It's the Did same you do any one. ball balancing exercises, squats to strengthen those ankles? No, I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't oh, really? No, I've been to PT for ankle stuff. That's that's good to I'll know. I'll teach you after this. Okay. Um, yeah. So so he fucked your ankle up. He fucked my ankle up. Well, I fucked it up myself. I was like doing some movement and I rolled it, rolled over it. And then 
uh, I just, I didn't want to go to the doctor because I didn't want to get told that I couldn't fight. So then my boss told me kind of like, you have to go. Like you have, she was telling me like, you got to go, you got to go. And so she finally took me and for some reason, whatever reason it is, she does not like St. Luke's. Like, I don't know why, but okay. she, she, uh, just cause they take forever. And I guess they're mm. not like, she doesn't like the customer service. Yeah, pretty much. She's, okay. she's a bit older than me too. So, um, you like, know, you've been around when you got a particular medical provider. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so she's like, no, you're going to North Canyon. And I was like, Oh, okay. And I, I think it's, I don't want to say it's a private doctor, but it's, it's a bit, it's more it, expensive. Yeah. More expensive. And okay. it's all expensive. Um, Go, they tell me it was a, a high ankle sprain, which is like, I don't know, they just said it was bad. So they did like a, they did x-rays on it and everything. And they, they told me that it was bad and they advised not to fight. And they put me in a boot and um, fight comes around. So I didn't want to say anything. I was hush hush about it. I didn't even, I wore the boot maybe like two days and I took it off because I was like, no, I, I'm going to fight. Like I know I need to. And one, and the reason I, I was so adamant on fighting is because um, it was again, like my brother slash uncle, his name's Alex, Alex Ruiz. Um, it was his girlfriend's little brother. And, and he, I don't, it was, it was kind of like, I didn't want to, like, it was, I just, it was like, he was like, oh, oh my brother's going to win. And she's like, no, my oh, brother's okay. going to win. It was that type of thing. Like, oh uh, yeah. A lot of drama getting attached. Sort of a little bit. Oh yeah. my gosh. Um, and I was like, ah, oh. so it kind of was getting a little bit like, uh, this sucks when people want you to fight for them. Yeah, and for their beef. No, uh, it wasn't really. It was it was his girlfriend. It, it was his girlfriend. So he was like, oh. he was obviously because I'm I'm his. So that's hype. That's also hype too. You've been in enough matches too that people are probably like, my person gonna win. Yeah, I was like, we'll see, we'll see when yeah, the match comes. That's cool. And it was honestly, I can make you train harder. Yeah, and <laughs> honestly, nobody really trains this. Like we yeah. trained, we trained. You guys said like came. the badger didn't going pretty well. Yeah, but um. For instance, like family boxing, for instance, that's yeah. one thing I love about family boxing is they're like, they're legit. Like there's yeah. people. They're focused on boxing 24 seven, going to like amateur competitions. Tur tournaments. And yeah. Getting, going to nationals. Exactly. All that cool stuff. And yeah. that's, that's uh They got long rounds. Yeah. This is a different breed. I get you. I've, I've known about family boxing for, oh, I don't know, since I was a sophomore and I wanted to go so bad, but I always found myself very yeah. busy with wrestling. Yeah. Well, hold on. Let me publicly apologize to Cody. Cody. I'm sorry. I called the smoker farmers. I'm, I'm a farmer. I, so I think I looked at it that way. I made a post, bro, saying, trying to pump up family boxing. And I was like, I, I'm like, come watch some badass boxers. Like you guys love to see farmers box. You're going to love this or some shit. Talk, I've uh -huh. called the boxing smoker farmers. Uh -huh. Yeah. And Cody got mad at me. He did. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say? He's like, yeah, I'm not going to talk about that it's too okay. much, okay. I love but he, no, I he's love so nice. We got on the phone and talked, but I just want to say that because I feel still feel bad. The reason I feel bad is because I realized I never want to be ne being, there's no reason to be negative to anybody nope. to promote somebody. And uh -huh. that, it, I, I, I needed to realize that I was, I'm just kind of a fucking say dumb shit kind of guy often. So I had to say that publicly like this. So Cody really knew. <laughs> I love, you've ever I love Cody. This. All right. Um, anyways, what were you saying? What was I saying? Boxing smoker nervous. He went to go fight this guy. Oh, and the reason oh, I, I went to fight him, he asked if I won. Uh, get in the ring and I could probably pull it out. The video didn't. And you'll see, I'll pull it out real quick for you if you don't mind. If you don't mind, do you? Yeah, no, dude, do it. We got no, who cares? You can just hit the skip button on the right side right here where you tap, double tap it for people on YouTube. It'll skip 10 seconds ahead. And as he's looking through this, you just double tap that a bunch and then you'll be right where the video is. Yeah, if you guys don't want to let no aren't interested in this but yeah and so we you're probably just tuned out already right now but it's okay because you probably don't even hear what i'm saying right now <laughs> <laughs> dude i'm hungry though we should get food after this listen what are you, what are you thinking what do you like to eat i don't know dude All but right. i'm fucking starving oh fuck everything's probably gonna be tired because it's friday what's her name irv ina irvina yeah it's not gonna work. Right. It's it's there, but it's 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 coming up. Well, um, show me later. Show yeah, me I'll show after. you later. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But um, third, maybe not even thirty seconds in, maybe fifteen seconds in. I freaking uh, we go. I throw I throw a flurry of punches. His headgear falls off, and I'm kind of like I'm still still going. You know, I'm locked. When I'm locked in, you ask, and I'll I'll, I'll answer the question. When I'm locked in, I'm locked in. Is the best oh, okay. way to put it. That's the best way to put it. When I'm yeah. when it's fight time to fight, it's time to fight. There's a different guy. There's a, there's a switch that flips, mm. especially with wrestling. Back to what I was saying. I'm not going to sit here and talk to my opponent. That's not who I am. Yeah. Um, there's you a know switch. Mike Tysony. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty close to. It. I don't. I don't like to talk. I'm not. But gonna he's sit. so nervous before fights. Oh, up until he gets to the ring. The wrestling. What he says. Listen, I was. I was. I was. I'm nervous. I never. I never said I was nervous. Uh, I wasn't nervous. <laughs> um, 
So we go 15 seconds in. I throw a couple flurries. Then Cody breaks, or I think Cody, his brother, they break it yeah. up. And we go again, and I decided, stupid, stupid of me, I decided I was going to Philly shell roll. Dumb. You know, I'm, I don't know yeah. enough, even remotely enough about that. I did this and got cl- punched right in the chin. And it, w- it was a good punch. Give him that. Yeah. I did it uh, shake you. Well, I fell on my ankle. Like it, it like, I don't want to say like any more, a little bit more pressure really? would have broke. It would have broke. Like it was my, my whole body weight. It was like, it just bent on. So it. you actually, you did go jelly a little bit. Cause then you shifted all your body weight to one, your weak ankle. Yeah. Well, it was weak the whole time. And I took, I was supposed to wear the brace. Cause he punched brace. you and yeah, then well, you like crippled this. down. Well, I was like this. I was like this. Oh, you're well, low. Like, yeah, you love low. to be low. I was low. Got right here. I left this open, got it down. Oh, sat you down. It sat me down. Wait, literally that did. Sucks. And then it sat me down on the foot. Then I, I literally, same thing. Like I told you during the match, oh, I, the I'm, a, I'm a fighter. So I get up and I'm ready to go. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Good shit. And that it, takes a lot of nerve right there in itself. It didn't. Uh, Cause you have to put yourself at vulnerability of uh, you're vulnerable and you have to say, I might fucking get knocked out. Knocked. This guy had got me and, and I, I got to get up and go. It was weird. Like it's, there's so it's, it's a different type of thing for people who don't know you. You've been in there. So it's like, I can't even explain it. I, I, I can't explain. Mm, this is why I love it so much. I love competition. This is who I am. I love competition. There's, there's the feelings that you get beforehand. You're afraid. You don't, you're shaking. You don't want to be in there. You know, like, your mind is going to tell you all these things to freaking, I want like try to get you to not win. That's how, that's what that's going to tell you. Why are you doing this? Like, you know, like just, it's, yeah. be, it's better that you don't, you, you can quit now. You know, all these dumb, it wants to preserve things. you. Exactly. It wants to make, take the safest route. Exactly. It preserve you from, you from, especially in fighting. Cause it's going to hurt you. It's literally going to damage you. It's like sit there and let uh, someone getting a knife and sticking it through your soul. Like, Oh, I don't want to do this. Yeah. Just go samurai style. Just keep it's almost it. like that where you're like, I don't want to do this. So you're going to, I could get hurt. It's like, it's like, uh, they say that if you bite your, your pinky as hard as a, car- a carrot, it'll come off, yeah. but your mind won't let you, you yeah. know? So it's kind of the same thing there. Yeah. If, if fighting, you got to say, fuck it. I'm going to hurt him first. I'm going to, I'm willing to put myself at that risk. I'm willing <laughs> yeah. to put myself at that risk. Exactly. And it's all a risk. Yeah. Hey, even training. It's all, it's all a risk, you know? And any, anybody who fights and anybody who trains knows that, you know, that's, that's what it is. You could get hurt in training like I did. And, um, so that was it. And then he hit me good. Like, it's just, like I said, but the feeling, like, I just remember like getting back up and looking at him and like, you're not even focused on the crowd. A lot of people are like, Oh, the crowd, this, the crowd, that I don't, yeah. I didn't give a damn. Same. I didn't give a damn that I got hurt. I didn't give a care. I think that- the adrenaline and dump in the beginning might affect something though. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause like you're you like get tired. You're, you're th- Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Way faster than you would in the gym alone. hundred percent. I could go rounds for days in the gym. <laughs> in the gym. <laughs> and then the, adre- you stand with the up pressure there, you're on like- you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The pressure on you. I'm, I remember walking up and like, it was like, um, my girlfriend, Kendallin was there. I remember. So she, she oh, nice. watched me. So I didn't like, I never fought in front of her and I, she watched me win a state title. So I didn't really compete in front of her and I'm very like focused, but I'd never fought in front of her. So yeah. I, I was th- overthought it. <laughs> That's a, that. Oh, I feel so bad for you. <laughs> I overthought it. I, and so I just, before I, before I walked in, I seen her at the corner of my eye, like at the table, like oh. it was just weird. Like I was hearing like every conversation as I was walking up those steps. Oh my gosh. Like, er, and pretty much everything that was going on. And I wasn't like, I want I don't want to say that I was focused. I was focused, but I was focused. I, I dude, And it sucks for us as men. When your girl sees you go down in a striking match, you can't but wonder like, you better not doubt me. I'm dangerous. <laughs> yeah, I'm still dangerous. <laughs> These hands are still dangerous. like you might have saw that, but that guy was good too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so but that's average exactly. guy. I'll put his ass down. Exactly I'll right there. Put his ass down. <laughs> Freaking yeah, that ain't that. That's a flu, you know. Um, yeah, so, hurts your ego a little bit. Yeah, uh, and the one thing is uh, pretty sweet. Her, she spent the freaking whole night in the hospital with me, and yo, you had to go to the hospital dude, for your ankle. It was. I thought it was broke. I oh, thought it shit. snapped. I th- I I uh, I got like I said. I got back up, and I was like mm. walking around, and the adrenaline like it just it shot. Like I can I didn't feel nothing. Yeah. I didn't remember yeah, anything after that. Yeah. Then and it just blood rushed. Oh yeah, and swollen, swelled up, and was I was throbbing like a motherfucker. Oh, I had tape on. I had so much athletic tape. I didn't want to wear a brace because the brace, like, yeah, it was just, constricted. Yeah, constricted, and it made it tight on my wrestling shoe. Um, but to answer your question, the nerves. What I tell myself before any wrestling match, uh, any competition like that, and that's why that's why I'm really, 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 really eager to step into a, a cage. Yeah. Like I'm so like I love I love it. I love everything about martial arts. Um, you know, and I just. 
I don't, they're at, it, at the very moment, there's nothing, and I, and I mean this with respect to anybody, you know, and everything. There's nothing to me at the moment that interests me job wise, for instance, like there's so many jobs. Think about it. There's so many jobs everywhere. Mm-hmm. There's nothing that interests me more than fighting. I love fighting, but, yeah. but everybody, everybody loves to watch it's it. It's a thrill. But, yeah. It's a thrill. Everybody it's loves to watch thrill. it. And I, I really want to do it. Like I want to, like I'm, I, I, I yeah. will. It's I, all in or all like all in or don't go in. Exactly. Type and, of thing. and if I, if I, if I go, if I live this life, I don't, I don't want to go, I don't want to be on my deathbed or, or anything saying, I just wish I would have stepped in the cage. Well, all I got to say right now is your kicks, your kicks need some work. <laughs> oh, they do. Listen, listen, I've worked on the hands and I got the wrestling. I got to work on my You're kicks. You're going to get it. You never kick shit. You said. I don't, I don't. It's, it's, I've, I've, it takes a while to get those hips feeling loose enough to be able to understand that feeling of a driving your hip over. Listen, it does. And I, you know, you showed me today and I obviously need, you got to work on some stuff. <laughs> yeah. You, it's the left one. Your right one was landing good. The left one, switch kicks, I think. Did you get those all right? Yeah. How would you like it? Uh, Which ones felt strong for you? Switch kicks. Switch kicks? Yeah. You like those ones the best? Yeah. Do the combination and then you switch. Yeah. Switch it up, yeah. I, uh. And your shins, how they feel? They hurt? They're hurting, yeah. And honestly. How about your foot? No, not my foot. Is it supposed to be like that? Yeah, like conditioning. Some people get like broomsticks and sticks and they just rub their shins until it kills all the nerves. Sometimes I do it when I was doing karate in Japan, we would do conditioning with our forms and everything. And I would, in my squad bay where I would work in the Marine Corps there, I would go, there's a big cement post. I would every day go there and I would just boom, oh, hit my back dude. of my arms for a while. And I would hit the sides of my arms for a while just to, to condition. I'm pretty sure I just fucked my bones up, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I was feeling like a Bruce Lee energy. You know, I'm like, I'm in Japan learning karate from literally no shit. My instructor's name was Miyagi. Mr. Miyagi, literally from Karate Kid. And guess where we were? Okinawa, where we were the- Okinawa, where, Japan. Where it, that took place. Wow. Yeah, was, I didn't even, I'd never seen Karate Kid. I didn't even know that no. that was a thing. People were like, bullshit, <laughs> Miyagi. I'm like, what? <laughs> They're like, you're full of shit, Miyagi. Uh, I was legit did you learn trained a lot? by- did you, did you respect that martial art karate? Uh, I mean, some, some fucking- Japanese teenagers kicked my ass. No way. For sure. We would do like sparring, but sparring and karate was weird. We would face each other and go for like body shots only. And dude, oh, that shit would hurt. Oh, God, <laughs> dude, that shit would hurt. Did they spar? Was that considered sparring? That was how we'd spar. And I would go up with this yellow belt teenager all the time. And we'd go and he'd, he would beat the shit out of me. Dude, I would be bruised all over. And they'd punch you in the gut, dude. It would hurt. That shit would like bruise you. Because we're <laughs> just bare fisting, boom, 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 kicking, stuff like that. It's like pretty stupid, I think, though, because you don't really incorporate like in a fight, you need to move and you need to like, I'm sure that's later belts. I didn't stay for long, long enough to belt up or anything. Just like months there. What made you want to go to that? Because it's like, how would you even navigate yourself my in Japan? My buddy found it. He did? Yeah, my buddy who was into karate and he was into kickboxing. He went and competed out in town and some like Takazin Japanese did, did win? champion. Did he win? Uh that's fucking no, cool. I don't think he won. That's fucking cool. He got badass pictures though where he's all shirtless and ripped out there throwing kicks and stuff. This is a kickboxing match. So it was, it was awesome. It was a sick place too because we got to go out in town. We were and they liberty love fighting. buddies. They love fighting. Yeah, it was fun. Dude. I mean, Japan's all about samurais and they developed jujitsu and everything. So they're really martial arts. They respect it. Yeah, and it was cool, dude, because we went out there and there was another military guy there that competed. We didn't ever, he was a huge dude. He was huge. I think he was from the Air Force Base. And he fucking, they were, funk, funk, they were slugging it out hard. You, you could hear the first one smack across the face, like, thunk, and it just sounded like that. <gasps> that, you know, when you hear a thud, solid connection, it was crazy. But my, my friend, he did pretty good too. I don't, <laughs> think, I don't think he won, but he, they went all the rounds. Respect but yeah, that, that show was fun, dude. That show was fun because there's nothing but Japanese people everywhere. And it was like this like tight little, we had to go out to some deeper district area in the middle of Okinawa in this like it looked like a mall but then you go like downstairs and it was like this like fighting arena place and it was, and it was, it was like, pretty cool huh? it was just japanese people everywhere you feel like you're in fucking tokyo drift dude it's just <laughs> fucking fighters people fighting and cool stuff little, cool little freaking get down there and yeah. it's a cage i've and been everything. to some cool ass underground things before one time in portland i got into the because with videos i get it right access get to cool shit i'm gonna go make a cool video with you and I got into these like underground dance battles crowd, dude. I was in the fucking underground dance battle place. Let me show you a little clip because that shit was fucking awesome. I was like, I felt like I was in like a step up movie. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, you fucking, you, you haven't been traveling too much, huh? You said? 
<sighs> you went to California was your latest. The, adv- yeah. Latest one by myself. Latest and greatest. Latest and greatest. <laughs> so you do, do you have a, so you got your charger? Yeah. I got my charger, red charger. Dude, you get to just take, hit the fucking road. Oh, look, look here. Here. Oh, they're dance battling. Dance battling in this like cool little underground place. Look, it was like sick dances too. Look, there's another one. And they did group battles and stuff. And then I got down there with my camera. And I'm down on the jump floor. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That was Should pretty have cool. hopped in. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, shut up! Like that. <laughs> <laughs> got this out doing like some bachata dancing. <laughs> some sexy dancing. Yeah, I get a partner. Just like, put on put some one Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> do you dance? Do you do like quince dances and shit? Uh, Go out to the dance bailes. Yeah, I'm. I'm I mean, I you got a cowboy I got, hat. I got it in me. Are you a vaquero? Uh, no, I don't got a cowboy hat. No, but um, do you speak Spanish? No. Oh I, really? No, I mean I understand it. I can. Oh, it's because you're it's because of your crazy upbringing. You weren't around people to speak. My a father lot. Sp- only spoke Spanish. Speak yeah, but then he's gone at five. Gone at five <laughs> after that. So I spoke fluent. Like I was like, yeah. I, the you first- got to teach yourself now. Yeah, exactly. That's that. I was in the same position. I had to teach. And myself. it's tough when you're older too, because when you're do, young, it's just freaking. Do uh, but you've been around it enough that you're gonna absorb it like a sponge. Oh yeah, I was like, like I still to got people it. who weren't around it. I, st- I still got yeah. it to like. And then you're, it's just, un- it's like riding a bike probably. Then you're just going to like start unlocking shit and be like making connections and be able to speak it way fast. Just put the effort in a little bit. Can you speak Spanish? Más o menos. Pero hablo como un gringo. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's la verdad way. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. I always throw in some, I'm like, like, uh, you know, Alize. She's a cheerleader too. Uh, Alizé, she's one of the captains, but she was a. Uh, I, I follow the page and I've heard. Oh, really? I don't know how it. much because everyone's like, we're such a family, we hang out all the time. <laughs> so I don't know who. I'm like, are they, do you know her? Because everyone's probably at each no, other's houses. No, I don't, I don't know how the fucking vibe is for all of them. No. They act like they're, t- I, they are tight. They oh. are tight. I remember because Kinsey was saying some stuff. She's like, I think I could call any of them right now and say, you want to hang out? And they would all, any, they'd all say, yeah. I'm like, that's a big ass family, that's, that's dude. That's pretty tight. That's tight. Yeah. But you know, that's like. Some camaraderie. Yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's what it was like in the Marine Corps too. When you're just around people. It's nice people, to have that. Yeah. That camaraderie. You go through the shit together and then you got a family and you hate a bunch of them, but they're still your family. Yeah. <laughs> that's how it is. Yeah. That's exactly it. Oh my God. I got into so many fights with some Marines in the Marine Corps. I did wrestling tournaments in the Marine Corps. You did? On Okinawa, yeah. And I also played football on a base team. There's a base. All the bases had football teams. We play against each other. So I played a linebacker on there. I played uh, linebacker on my, I played linebacker on my last Shrine, Shriners game. Wilson let me play linebacker the whole game. He did? Yeah, I never played he linebacker was your coach? in my life. Wilson was a coach? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's not anymore, huh? No, he ain't. He's he was the shit. Stoop, so, uh, athletic director is what he is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, Wilson told me that he... That if I would have actually dedicated to sports sooner, I could have been great. And it made me always sit there and go, damn. Oh, <laughs> there was also a disappointing time like that at boot camp where uh, one of my super, the super angry drill instructors found me catering to my pink eye because everybody got pink eye over there. If you touch your face, you get pink eye at boot camp. And we were just doing the rifle <laughs> qual. We were qualifying with the rifle and my eyes started to itch and my hands are covered in CLP, the grease for the guns. And we were using iron sights, dude. They, we were the last group to use iron sights. After us, they started using ACOGs, you know, like a, like a scope. So we had to use iron sights. You know what that is? Explain. It's better. like just the, the just the part on the barrel. There's a tip, and then on the close part, there's a little fork, and you have to line it up. Ha, there's no scope. It's more you difficult. Shoot. Yeah, it's the, like the World War II style. Aim <laughs> down the barrel and shoot. And we had a call, and we were at the 500 yard line. I could not see the target for the life of me because my eye would be swelling up with water. And I'm like, I got to wipe my eye. You got pink eye. And I, I, it was just, it wasn't bad though. It wasn't bad. It was like my eye was starting barely and I had CLP covering my hand. I go like that. <gasps> Did it burn? Did it burn? Boom. Another shot. Boom. Another shot. <laughs> like that, dude. Because it would swell up. And after I fucked it with my hand. It swelled up. It swelled Dude, up. It swelled up. And I was hiding in the bathroom trying to get it because they thought only shit bags got pink eye because they touched our face. And the <laughs> Joe instructor said, never fucking touch your face. And he, I'm in the bathroom dabbing it with a piece of paper so I didn't touch it with my hands anymore. And the Joe instructor walks in and goes, Turner. And I thought you were one of the good ones. <laughs> he got you. He yeah. t- said it tough too. Yeah, he's like, I thought you were one of the good ones. I guess there's, he said something like, I guess there's no hope for this. The, there's like, there's no hope. And like walked away, dude. And I was like, I off. felt like I was on his good side. And I lost it. You did. Dude, it hurt. It felt bad. But he knew how to dig into me. They know how. Hell yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, because you're thinking about joining the Marines, huh, bro? Uh, Marines are fighter. I don't... Yeah, Marines are fighter. I don't want to say I was thinking about joining. I I remember as a, as a freshman, I was always like... I don't... I was, I don't know why, but I was worried about like what was going to happen after high school, what I was going to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and something was kind of comforting about the Marines. You know, you were, you had some camarader- com- camaraderie. Yeah. You um, were seeing the world. You know what you should consider doing? No. Let me be a little recruiter on you. Cause you're in a hard predicament with your family. Having yeah. to, to take care of at such a young age. Yeah. One way you could get the resources you'd need was what if you got on the Marine Corps wrestling team? That would give you such a strong foundation in the MMA career when you got out and were stronger and thicker too. A hundred percent would. Dude, my sergeant, Sergeant Soto, he was on the Marine Corps wrestling team and he transferred to my platoon, right? He was he finished wrestling for the Marine Corps and then he came to us and he was a hard little, badass little Puerto Rican man. He was such a stud. He'd always say, he'd always teach us how to fight and then be like, if they get in your face, send them to dental. We have free dental. <laughs> and he'd just like headbutt over. Like, fuck it. Like, he was teaching us how to fight all the time. And we'd be, we'd fucking, we, we had mats in my squad bay. So we would just always be grappling and wrestling and fucking around all the time. That's what I love about, about mixed martial arts in general. Cause with football, basketball, soccer, you need a ball, you know, like if you have a, just a bunch of men, ladies or anything. Yeah. And you guys want to, Decide you want to get better at fighting. Okay, well, let's throw, you know, throw a punch, throw a jab. Or just, you don't need a football. Yeah. You don't you don't need these oh, prerequisites. Wow, violation. Oh, shit. It's, it's okay. Who is it? Ken? No, I don't even know. I just, <laughs> I don't know. It's probably spam. I don't know whose number that is. <laughs> that, is. that ain't yours. I, have, I, have, I put your number in my phone, so that ain't yours. Nice. Yeah, for the Marine Corps wrestling team, that could be like a crazy, because then you get, uh, d- you could have dependents under you. That you get a shit ton of money for each dependent. You get like a thousand each or some shit. Really? And if you had like five dependents, then you'd get like a shit ton of money. <laughs> <laughs> a shit ton of money. That's, that's I was always they... jealous of the people who were married getting into the military because they had like one wife dependent boost, like doubled their pay. Makes the world go around. Yeah. But I'm guessing you're pretty attached to the geogra- geographical location of this place because your family's here. Yeah. You know what? Because the- you could take them with you. I could. You get a house after boot camp probably. I didn't think I didn't know. I knew yeah, you do. Life. If you got families, they'll provide housing. Really? And they go to base and live on base. Or if they don't have enough money to pay, for, if you don't have a base housing, they give you a stipend, a housing allowance where you go out in town and find a house. That's pretty cool. Yeah. They take care of you. Well, you they got to take care of their military. That's the fucking backbone of keeping this country alive. Uh-huh. Whoever has the biggest military is like whoever has the biggest gun is the most safe, you know? And uh, if you don't mind me asking, like, since you were in the Marine, did, did, do they take care of you? I should say now that you're 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 out. Oh yeah, they take care of you. Except yeah. now I know they probably can make you take COVID shots and all that stuff. So I don't you know. To, you have to take COVID shots. Yeah, I know a lot of people who are out of the military because they refuse to take a COVID shot, and they kicked them out. And, and that's that's understandable. But this is also the trippy. Here's a dark conspiracy. They're also putting a, a lot of immigrants in the military now, accepting more immigrants. Be when I was in boot camp. My fucking bunk buddy straight across from me didn't speak any English. Didn't speak any English. I would talk to him in a little bit of Spanish that I knew. And he was straight joined so he could get his papers. He was like, a, he fucking came here. I don't know what the, maybe he had a green card. I don't know. But he, I just know he didn't have papers. And that's why he signed up and he's here to get papers. That's pretty, I know that you can, I know that there's yeah. some process that you get your parents' papers too through that, right? Really? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. But I was like, wow, that's a real thing. That's cool. And then it's like, I think of uh, Animal Farm. The good trick is because, you know, there's like a flood of, uh, you know, undocumented immigrants, really just like 30,000 fucking Chinese immigrants just came from the the book. Yeah. Oh, I love that. You know how the the fucking key, the key was when he got the dogs. He wouldn't have enforced shit if he didn't have those dogs. Uh The key to having power is having people, the good, having the graces of the, the dangerous person. Then you have power. That book opened my eyes. That book at... The author of that book, George Orwell, was very, yeah. very, very smart, and articulate. And he lived through an interesting time, too. That so, was a good book. Yeah, you got to elevate to some more real World it War II books your eyes. now. It yeah. opened your eyes. It's the best yeah. way to put it. Yeah, but, uh, Gulag Archipelago is Big Brother, real, real life Big Brother. It's it's everything but worse. It's about the thought police, you know, and getting sent to the Gulag in the Soviet Union. People would come and they'd take fucking grandmas in the middle of the night. They'd make people confess to crimes that they didn't do and send them 10 years of hard labor. You know how they get some guys to confess to crimes? You did this, didn't you? You were thinking against our powerful Hitler. We know you had... They they sent all the fucking philosophers and scientists, everyone who's smart to fucking hard labor camps where most people died. And the way they'd get people to confess, 
Let me get one of those testicles and put my boot right on it and start squishing uh, it until you admit that you did this. Pop. Oh, give me the other testicle. Did you do it? No, no, no. Okay, I did it. All right. 10 years hard labor. You ain't got a choice. You ain't yeah, got much you're of a choice. <laughs> you're, going, you're going to hard labor. Might how as well mu- keep your balls. Yeah. How much do you like your testicles? And then it was crazy because there was this, uh, the gulag, the, it's like a, the gulag humor. No, uh, gallo humor, what they called it. People in such devastating time who find like humor and laugh throughout the hard times. Like there are people who would sh- they get thrown in the cage and they'd look around at their bunk mates and then they'd all just start laughing and they don't know why it was like a coping thing. It's like when you're in such a shitty time, but like, it's like the only good thing you can hold on to is that you can fucking laugh at it. Laughter is the like, best what medicine. What the fuck is this? That's what they say. I've been in those times in the Marine Corps where we're just belligerently don't give a fuck anymore. Our life sucks so bad that we're just laughing at our fucking leaders faces and we don't give a fuck. It's yeah, hilarious. That's not probably the smart. He probably didn't enjoy that after, did you? It just goes longer, but you don't care. You don't, you, you don't care anymore. You Make just, it go on all day. Cause you already be there at one at night and they're fucking with you making fucking repaint the parking lot, making you re- Rearrange everything out of a giant ISO container, making you do dumb shit, dude. They'll fuck with you, make you over, the, you over the weekend. To break yeah, you. over the weekend just to fuck with you. And you get to a point where it's like 1 a.m., you know you're not going home. You know your weekend's fucked, and you're just like, what are you going to do? Like, I'm going to laugh my way through this because what are you going to do? I'm already at max punishment. I'm laughing my they way. They can't punch you or anything? Like, get like. It, well, that's old school Marine Corps. Oh. I, dude, I, when I showed up to my fucking people, I was a corp- I got promoted to corporal, this one, uh-huh. <laughs> right when I got to California. And so that was my first time being corporal and I was all trying to be tough, like old school. And I'm like, if anybody got a problem, that's on all the boots. If anybody no. has a problem, we're going to deal, deal with it the old school way behind the ISO containers. <laughs> and like, is, are you guys down with that? And they were like, yes, corporal. Ah, they wanted it too. They that's wanted tough. it too that's though. Cool. Is I would fucking fuck. I would fucking maul some of those. Fuckers, <laughs> but they would disrespect me, dude. Yeah, that's that's. That would be cool all the time until one fuck one little boot took it would take it too far and not respect me as a corporal. And that's my fault as a bad leader, probably though. But then I'd be like, in, in the Marine Corps, it's like it's like cool to fucking chew out younger ranks. What? I'm a fucking corporal, motherfucker. Grabbed by the collar. <laughs> no, listen, I hate to be that corporal to, the, to be the young yeah, guy. Yeah, it's not good leadership qualities, but it was really rewarded, that type of behavior, like being an ass and just being hard and just hazing and doing that, making their life hell, making it like boot camp all the time. And it gives them character too, though. Those and it just and there's a thought that's like you get so mad that you when you when you go to the enemy you'll visualize your command. <laughs> you so want to kill him. You're so angry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, and I think there is something to keeping people broken a little bit because you control them better. Yeah. You know what I mean? You need you need instant obedience to orders. Instant obedience to orders. That's what it was always. Repeated. Don't ask why. That was a problem for me. I would ask why. I was too smart. <laughs> why are we doing it like this if it's more efficient if we do it like this? And they got mad at you. Shut the fuck up. Instant obedience to orders. <laughs> Instant obedience. <laughs> if I tell you to run up that hill at that machine gun nest and charge it, even though you're probably going to die, you better fucking do it. Oh, shit. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah. That's 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 a good, better way to break down. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it really does matter. Hard ass. Yeah, it does matter. <laughs> this is... We're, it's the business of war. It's not... We're in Amazon. We're carrying on the legacy of the most deadly fighting force on the planet, winning wars against nations who put all their best men against us to kill us. And you're training to kill them first, to kill them better. That's what it is. <laughs> how, how do you feel with uh, everything that's going on right now? Like not even, I guess always said a lot though. Everything. There's always, I believe now that I'm starting to get older, there's always going to be something I think. Am I, like, well, I, I feel like and you like, it's a boiling point reaching from everything that happened from the Cold War and beyond. Like, East versus West coming together now for maybe a changeover of the superpower. What's what's next, I should say? A lot what's, of empires have crashed in history. Lots of empires have been forgotten by time. Oh, yeah. And they've just died. And that happens. Just, it's fun to think. It's funny because you live in a blissful ignorance where you think it'll never happen to you. Ever, just like getting old. Just like getting old. Nobody ever thinks it's going to happen to them. And then, boom. You know... I told you, you know, Bosnian refugees, let me tell you the story. This Yugoslavia broke apart. Bosnia and Serbs are going at it. They start fucking mass killing. They would just, there'd be Bosnian grannies crossing the street. And it was very common. I listened to Sebastian Junger. He's a war correspondent who he made this documentary called Restrepo. I talk about it all the time. I love it so much. It's you boots on the ground documentary of combat, like soldiers in Afghanistan combat. He got in its super emotional ride. He's right there in combat with them. People dying, people crying on camera. 
And he was a war correspondent in Bosnia when that whole shit kicked off and they were killing all the Bosnians. They were going to genocide them. And that was in the 90s. That's in the 90s, dude. Oh, that wow. was recent. I mean, the people living here, they experienced that. They had to smuggle freaking Irvina out of the country because they were going to kill him for being like Mus- Muslim Yugoslavs kind of. But they were a little more divided too because the Balkan lands are weird. There's obviously always gray and deeper history and hit, as you look into the conflicts deeper and deeper. Anyways, they're killing all the Bosnian... The, the war correspondent, Sebastian Junger, writes about how he, it was a daily occurrence that you would just see an old lady dead on the street from snipers who would just sit in apartments and shoot people on the street. They would shoot Bosnians. They would drive the tanks into the land and shoot tank... Fucking shoot missiles into apartment buildings and shit. They were just killing people left and right. They would get round people up into camps. There's a lot of people. Most Bosnians here, I bet you, know... If they have family members that got taken to a camp and got killed. Tough. That's... Yeah, I mean, it's not going to happen to us, though. Tough it to only experience. happens to those people to in experience. their countries across the ocean in Europe where they have battles. War will never come here. <laughs> That's the naive ignorance that most Americans live in. And you believe that it will? It could. Dude, it, could, could it can. It could, it it's can. 100% can. And if it can, how likely will it? It will. Exactly. If it can, it will. And it's like, are we a super strong united country that can stand up against a superpower? We feel as divided as ever. I think about the game Survivor. You ever watched NBC Survivor? Mm-hmm. It's like you just kiss the mic. Nah, <laughs> I guess, I guess, like a, a bottom lip. Yeah. <laughs> Kindling, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, but it's NBC Survivor. It's a game where you have to live on an island and do challenges. And every night they vote off like a member of their oh. own tribe. And so it's they, how do you, they would like make alliances together. Okay. The three of us can outdo the two of them. So let's all stay together and we'll, We'll vote that person out and it's guaranteed us three to the end. It's back scratching. But at the end, there's only one person. So people have to think of plans ahead of them. And the way they get ahead of them, they like if a person was on the outs, say there's a one person who's getting, he's on the outs of an alliance, right? Uh-huh. It's me and you and we're homies, right? Isaiah's over there. And I'm like, dude, Jillian, me and you are going to fucking vote Isaiah out. We have promise you, me and you to the end, right? Yeah. Let's do this. Isaiah has no hope. He's over there hopeless, but the hope he does have, if he can spark it, is to spark division between us and, say, fight. and get one of us to vote for the, each other. And the way he do it is he goes to talk to you and goes, Julian, I, I, you know, Jason came and talked to me and said he was going to vote for you. So he, he, I'm serious. So, but I don't want to go to the end with him. So I'm giving you this grace telling you so that we can vote together and get him out. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. no winning. And now it's we're divided. We could be strong together, but we're divided. And we don't even know that we're divided. We, he's lying. And guess what? Who's doing that to our entire country? Spam bots through Russia, through China, through everything. We're all divided like a motherfucker, pointing at left versus right versus Christian versus Muslim versus... And we're a mixing pot of the world. We're all humans. <laughs> we're a mixing pot of the world. What's an American? A Native American, a person that came here through slavery. There's Americans are Aretha Franklin. You know, Americans are fucking uh, that fucking Navy SEAL Asian astronaut. Uh, everything. Right? <laughs> they're, 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 they're Americans are Martin Luther King Jr. Americans are, you know, all the people you love along with the people you hate. We're a mixing part. We're a big family, but people are forgetting we're family. Yeah. All humans do, most importantly. Yeah, that's the most important battle. But it's also scary because you have to convince the other people that we're humans and we don't speak the language, on the culture, and they're getting brainwashed in their different version of a government. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they hate us. It's so easy to pin people to bite each other because we all have that rage, that young man's spire. Remember, I was watching 9-11, have I forgotten? I wanted to kill everybody. Uh-huh. It's easy you're to ta- tap into that energy and say, that's the enemy, that's the other, kill them. And get after them. Yeah, you can you can inform the narrative to be whatever. You're we're the good guys. Trust me. Yeah, they did something worse, and they're doing the same thing. They too. They did something worse. They go, no, you're doing something worse. Now we need just fight. Yeah, I don't know. Crazy. How much of it has to come from a pa- pacifism? How much? How far do you let your in, your tolerance take you to near destruction? That's really the big question. Tolerance is the form of peace. Being tolerant of people, but. Of course, you got to draw a line somewhere or else you'll be obliterated. It's the intolerance to tolerance paradox. Wow. <laughs> the intolerant people will destroy the tolerant. Because you tolerant people tolerate the intolerant and the intolerant will not tolerate the tolerant. So I just, it's a cycle <laughs> of not working. It ain't so doing it's, good. A, it's, a, it's a shitty yin and yang cycle. There always is going to be chaos for progress, probably. Sorry for the long. <laughs> no, you're good. Where there's where there's dark, there's light. Where there's where there's light, there's dark. It's everywhere. It's, yeah. Uh, it's, let me hit you with one more question, bro. All right. It's like I gotta use the restroom. Okay. It's you want to just take a part? 
Yeah, pot, like, potty break? I take That's what yeah. I call it for Bosco. Let's okay. take a potty break. All right. <laughs> Anyways. Let me bust out my little questionnaire right here. I prepared some decent questions. This is kind of what I do. I prepare, I think of questions for people to do in an interview. It's like my way I make my living, really. It's good to be a little bit prepared, too, though. A little bit prepared. Yeah. Tell me what you think of this question. Where is the most memorable, memorable place you've traveled to? Memorable place. One that like, then I'm asking here, uh, one that holds most memory to me or like one that I go back to, like just mm. like, tr- like distant, like could it be in there? I just, I'm trying to like get more, like give whichever one has highest priority to you. Oh, most memorable place. The one in your, you can remember it. Memory. I don't know what the fuck you think. Yeah, you're, like, gosh, well, just most, a great place that you okay. love in your memories. Okay, that's okay, really okay. top, top tier. I wanted to be aesthetic as well. Ah, uh, cause I might go there. Man. <laughs> shit. Well, to be honest, I we live in Twin Falls, Idaho. Yeah. So your memories are attached to certain people experiences that oh, you've yeah. had in people, places, people, right? Pe- people experiences. Um, I haven't done, like I said, I haven't done a whole lot of traveling yet. And that's one thing that I really, really, really find a lot of interest in is traveling. And I would really love to do it with Kendall and that'd be so much fun just because yeah. you know, I love her and that'd be, that'd be some fun, you know, that'd be mm-hmm. some fun seeing different things. Where do you want to go then? Oh man. Okay. So I want to see, a, I, def- I want to. First and foremost, I want to see Alaska. That's beautiful. I want oh, to go to me Alaska. Too. I want to so go salmon bad. fishing, dude. Salmon fishing in Alaska and come back with a big cooler full dude, of big salmon. Or just go freaking hunting for just hunting moose. in general. Yeah, hunting in general. I've, I've yeah. never gone hunting, so that's another thing. You better you're registered. You got hunter, hunter's education? No, I don't even. Oh, you have to do, do you, that. You, you can do, do it online that? now. You can? You yeah. Do? So you go to the fishing game website, I think, and you can sign up for hunter's education, hunter's ed. You have to do that. And then you can apply for a tag this year. I'm applying for a tag this year. Well, another conflict of interest is I don't own a gun. And I... Yeah. Uh, it's it's easy I, to find people with guns around here, though. Okay. Fair There's enough. a lot of people with guns around here. Fair, you know, borrow your gun, I'll give you some meat. <laughs> okay. okay. Borrow your gun, I'll give you some meat. Okay. That's a, good, that's a good little trade right there. Yeah. Um, if you're successful. If you're successful, yeah. yeah. And which is most times. So then we start, we paint some blood on her. We're going, we're going. Feel um, the wind. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think, uh, okay. Stay some, I want to Italy. I want to go to Italy. Oh, like yeah. you said, I want to really want to go. I want to go nice. to Europe, you know, freaking, yeah. I just want to just, and that's one Sound thing. like you want to backpack Europe. This yeah. is like the vibe I'm getting from you. Yeah. yeah I really want to see, I really want to see the world. There's so much that I haven't seen, you know, mm-hmm. Greece. Um, I want to go to Brazil. I want to go check that out. Like, um, I, one thing is kind of sounds silly. I want to go, I want to go see Dagestan, Russia. That's one thing. Oh my gosh. Your wrestling obsession. Yeah. You want to go jump on a mat with them? Huh? Yeah. I want to go. I want to go whoop your ass. They probably 100% they probably are just would. so crazy good, right? Yeah. It's weird. They're crazy. You good. see Khabib wrestle that like top high school ranked kid in the na- in the nation or something. Yeah. That and kid. He doesn't even sprawl or nothing. That kid now is, uh, he has, I think he does his own podcast. Oh really? Yeah. He's, uh, he's in college now and he wrestles for Michigan state. And, wow. uh, so like that kid was probably like in high school when he went and made that video with Habib, which That's is awesome. But still like that, that, that level of wrestling for those guys. Yeah. And they did Samba, which is pretty but much. But you wrestling. can tell the way he moves, just that he's so comfortable and confident. And he's not trying, like he's like going very easy. Confident. The kid's like tapping around, trying to find his opening. He goes for an ankle pick and Khabib just lets him get it and pulls his foot right out. That's it doesn't even sprawl. No nature to sprawl. Confidence. And when he's in a fight, even when he's like holding on to people, it's so weird. He just knows how to just those tiny little tweaks that just make people lose their balance and hit the ground. Yeah. And I love, I love one thing. One thing that's really that, uh, excuse me, strikes interest to me about all those fighters. And it, maybe it has to do with the religion, but, uh, uh their devotion f- to it, faith. Oh my gosh. During dude. Ramadan right now, they're training. No yeah. water. I love that. I don't, and I honestly, I want to, I want to, uh, dive into that a little bit. Cause I, I, I don't myself really know a whole lot about that, but I respect them so much, especially the ones that are, I think Muslim is the ones who do Mat Ramadan, right. Partake yeah. in it. Um, they go into fighting like this. They go into, excuse me, they go into it like, okay, well I can be nervous about it. I'm not going to really dwell whole, whole, a whole lot on the nervousness. Allah, God, they mm-hmm. say their, their version of it. They said, he'll, he'll take care of it. Like just go in there, do everything you can. And, and he knows, he already knows if you won. Like, I don't know what about that to me, but that to me is kind of like, Ooh, like I like that. Like that's, they're not really, whereas somebody who's not really in American, I should say, or anybody, you know, they're, they're mm. focused on, I'm going to tear this guy up. They're, they're not thinking, 
God's already got it. Like, you know, that's one thing. I, I like that a lot. There's some Christian guys. Yeah. They could, yeah. Very, very well could be. Yeah. And they always get a good following of Christians. I guess they just put a lot of light on the. Who's a Christian guy? Let's think of it. <laughs> Conor McGregor. <laughs> I don't think he's Christian. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh that was such an epic did you were you in the ufc when that was happening oh that's probably his rise probably is when i like was really really like ufc too he was on the, he was on the cover of it i remember yeah just he he, he made the sport blow up and honestly yeah. in, in the the it's been around since forever that's why i love fighting since the coliseum time yeah. i i get so, i don't know what it is i feel since like kane and abel if you will kane and abel <laughs> <laughs> i just uh i I, w- I wish I would have. I want to. I want to see the Coliseum. I. I wish that they somehow today could em- emulate that, a setting like that outside your fight. Honestly, Abel should have fucking had some ground game, some jujitsu or something. <laughs> what the fuck, bro? Are you just gonna lose to your little brother like that? Yeah, no, no, you don't, <laughs> no, not the little brother. Was he older? No, I think, I think he was little. Yeah, I just yeah. imagine like a little little twerp. Yeah, a little fucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the it's. You know, and it's been around forever. Yeah. Like, it, and like that, like football hasn't been around forever. Soccer hasn't been around forever. You know, it's been around for a good amount of time. But yeah, it's the ultimate. Like, literally, when everything boils down to it, fighting is the most nat- instinctual survival thing there is. It's beautiful, and that's what's happening out in nature every day. That is what nature is: fighting. Who can beat who when it comes down to the like to the death. You know, and they take it the closest to the death is MMA. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And yeah, they take you to either unconsciousness, broke you so bad that they had to stop the fight or put you in a position where if you don't tap, they will literally kill you or break you, you forever, sleep. break you in a way that will be horrible. And a lot of people are like, a lot of people go, oh, why do you want to do that? There's so much brain damage. Like, you don't even know this. You don't know that. Yeah. Like, I've got Good probably, questions. I can, I, can, I can even tell you how many times I've been told that. Well, and I haven't even yet stepped yet. I put it that way. You haven't yet stepped into a cage and I will, I know that I will. Cause I, I, I like I said, I don't want to be 40 and say, mm-hmm. or whenever, not 40, um, on my deathbed and, and say, I, I just wish I would have done it. Cause I could have took it somewhere. You know, I don't, yeah. I don't want to say that. You know? So what kind of stuff are you eating now? Eating. How's your diet and stuff? I mean, cause if you're going to be fired, it's like, you got to be like a fucking back in the state championship mindset, right? <laughs> oh, a little times 10, dude. Times 10. Yeah, I'd imagine. Um, so are you, are you like crazy about your diet? Oh yeah. Listen, I, uh, I don't know if you know what red lighting is. I do that every day. I do red, red light. light therapy. Yeah. Red light. Therapy. Isn't that for your skin? So you glow. Yeah. That's not for your body. I mean, I take Isn't care of myself. Like just... Girls do. I'm pretty sure my girl does that at, like at night. No, uh, I, it's like a, I, every fighters are doing it. Everyone around the world's doing it. It's, oh really? Yeah. Dude. What's it do? Um, one, it puts collagen back into your skin and there's like, we guess we have like 32 trillion cells in our body and it puts uh ATP in it. And it releases like all the, it really, it releases inflammation. It does, it does, there's a list of benefits. I could go on and on about it. But Imagine could be wins and you're undefeated. What do you got to say? Red light therapy. Red light therapy. <laughs> <laughs> I owe it to red light therapy. <laughs> no, but I feel like diet, diet's very important too. Right? You're I, like, uh, yeah, I'm going to diet red light therapy every day. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's part of it. Like that's. Uh, uh, is that just how intense and t- to the T everything is it with you? Oh yeah. Like so that. So you're light therapy, Excellent, you're eating you know, good. Eating good. And like you said, eggs, like, like the eggs are really good. Like we were just talking a little bit oh, yeah. ago. Um, <laughs> eggs and just one thing that this is one thing that I know, and I don't know a whole lot, you know, you know a whole lot more than I do. Uh, the outsides of the grocery store are pretty much where I aim for. If I walk into a grocery store and I go to the outside, which is pretty oh, much really? all produce, yeah, that's the healthier. They say the longer on the shelf, the worse for your health. The yeah. longer it is on the yeah, shelf. Yeah, for sure. It's like kibble for dogs. Yeah, exactly. I yeah. cook Bosco up some tilapia, sometimes even salmon fillets, and give him some good nutrients because I feel like he... I can't imagine having to eat that shit every fucking day. Exactly. And I'm like, that's like, you know, I look at my food. I feel like great when I eat like super paleo. <laughs> when I'm like, oh, I just ate like nothing but real fruits and veggies and just a bunch of meat. And it's like super clean. It feels like super clean. It feels good. Yeah. I don't know if it's a placebo effect or it's obviously not a placebo effect, but <laughs> you feel proud about yourself too. Oh, discipline. Yeah. Like, man, I'm fucking doing it. Especially, you know what? Especially when you're doing them all together, do it. You get a good workout in, yeah. you're working out a couple of times. You got good people around and then you. And you see progress. You see progress. You see yourself getting better. You go, I can be whatever I want to be. Exactly. I can be a stud. I can be a stud. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, yeah, just... I'm very big on eating right though. Like yeah. I, I lo- like I'm very, very, very big on that. And I'm not going to sit here and say like, I'm, 
I know, I know everything. Like I'm, I'm figuring things out as I go and through watching videos and just asking about and everything, like I'm starting to learn. And, um, nice. I know that this is one thing, this is a motto from wrestling that I, that I, it just as a little kid, this is what kind of had like, help me understand that you don't want to be fueled off of freaking solely Mountain Dew and chips, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I miss Takis. I used to eat Takis listen, all the uh, time. Burrito Dynamites. They were. All the time. This, all, I've, I've like every sandwich. Really good. Every sandwich? <laughs> every sandwich, everything. <laughs> Burrito sandwich, anything that I'm eating, it's better with fucking Takis. <laughs> no, and freaking. Yeah. I don't know Did saying. you eat Takis? I mean, I do you still eat Takis no, a lot? I, talk I have always some, dude. I want some tonight. Hey, tonight's the night. I just say, <laughs> fuck it. Irvina does not let me. She convinces me. And for some reason, that's I, good, it's because I know it's true. And it's like, I'm seeking for her to give me the justification to she be like, she needs to say, no, let me keep I'm good. Like, good I'm, on I'm her. like, babe, think about how good I've been eating for so long. I deserve like a bag of Takis. Oh, no, don't break She's it. She's like, don't. Do it. And Don't I'm like, break fuck, it. <laughs> fuck. I just wanted to say yes so bad because uh, for some reason it'll justify it to me. Like, she said, yeah. I get you. No, listen. So she it's says, like she pressured me a little. It's the final go. If she says, yeah, then okay, fuck it. Okay. <laughs> I hear yeah. what you're saying. Dude, yeah, you're fresh from that freaking cutting life. Yeah. How I, much did you cut? I never really cut, to be honest. Oh, really? Yeah. Lucky, I think I, you stayed healthy and strong. Just stayed healthy and strong. And lucky. That's good. Always, uh, I think, I think I only had to cut maybe one time in the season, but it was because. I was being a knucklehead and I'd went to the movies the night before a tournament, ate a bunch, ate a bunch. And I was like, I don't even know what, what I was thinking. I went and wrestled 138, which I wrestled. I won the state title at 26. So it's on a bag day. Yeah, dude. I, I, uh, I went with Hector to go watch a movie and Kindlin was at, at the time we were, we were dating. Yeah. Uh, or not even dating. We were just in okay. talking in the midst of dating. Oh. She, uh, she was, she was in Boise with like, I guess, uh, cheer or whatever. And we were in high school. All right. Um, and I fucking was eating and I thought, I remember I knew that I had to be up at like, Hector didn't have to go to the tournament and that's the guy that you had met oh, when yeah. we up there. Um, so he, he didn't care, you know, he didn't care that I had to be up and it was in Marsing. So I had to be, I had to, the bus was leaving at four 30 and the movie was like at 11 and it was, it was, it was, oh. it was recent. It was the, the Megan movie. So it was like, yeah, out at one, you got out at like one. Yeah, a. dude. Yeah. Oh. And, uh. And so I was eating right at, and I don't, I, I, I <gasps> swore I didn't drink no soda during that season. I major against that. I like <sighs> soda's good, but even now, like you diet know, soda. No, no, I'm not a big soda fan. Good job. I, but uh, I love diet soda. <laughs> but if I, if I'm I, a sparkling water guy now, because okay, I, I, I get that. I weighed, I went from soda to diet soda to starting putting sparkling water to sparkling water. Yeah, I, I like that. Um, what's it called? What's so it? you drink soda? Drink soda? Uh, no, and popcorn. Oh no, I didn't drink no soda. I said no. I was. Oh, uh, still okay. Yeah, I thought still that would have been your downfall. Okay, no, so no, no what downfall. Happened? I was just eating a shit ton of popcorn, and a shit ton of candy, and I knew I shouldn't have been, but like <laughs> almost a whole bag of popcorn, and I didn't think you don't think it's heavy or whatever. It's light. Yeah. And you I, think, Yo, what's the weight on this? Exactly. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't even. I didn't think. And I'll I was burn like, it off in six hours. Exactly. I thought I'll sleep it off. Whatever it is. You lose weight throughout the day. You can gauge. I'll be like, in, by tomorrow morning, I'll be a half a pound down. Exactly. That's exactly. And it's crazy. That's great. And you, when you know your body, you know your body. <laughs> so. I was like, I'll be fine. And well, salty popcorn. And it stuck. So then I wake Ooh. up and it, the, we have to. Before, probably held that water, huh? Salt, you think? I think so, yeah. Probably. There's a lot of salt. That's like a thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, salt uh, retaining water, water. water. Water retention. Holding yeah. it in. Um, well, I show up the next morning. We get I get to, I get to the school like at 4, 4, 15 or whatever. And we have to hop on the scale before we get on the bus so that he knows. And Fred wasn't there. Fred was in Boise at the girls tournament or something. So it was RC, the assistant coach. And he's really, really chill, laid back. Love him. Um, he, he's actually an accountant. So he knows, he knows his, he knows his stuff. Okay. He, he knows his numbers. <laughs> so, um, he, he's pretty laid back. So, uh, I hop on the scale and I was like 137. I think I was, I was heavy. You had to be 35. I had to be 26, oh. 126. Oh and, yeah. my god! And I was like in the, in the night before and I hadn't like, I wasn't like <laughs> being dumb. I just had wanted to, I think Hector was going through some things. Um, he had gotten in some trouble his senior year and he was going through some things. So I was like, yeah, man, I'll take you to the movie. So I went to the movies with him, uh, hung yeah. out and freaking there was your excuse of why well, that's all right. Yeah. I was like, it's I all just right. had some of this. And, uh, they made me bump up to 38. Oh, 
I ended up, I ended up winning. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I won. I won the tournament, but it wasn't a very big tournament. There was okay. like... Good shit, I had like Nice. Th- three matches, maybe. You're like, with fucking Skittles in my belly. With Skittles <laughs> and popcorn in my belly. <laughs> and chocolate. You got me by the power of Skittles yeah. and fucking chocolate and popcorn. They're all dieting, cutting down. You fucking trashed yourself and came and whooped them. Yeah. Um, well, and then, so... I guess I, I was kind of worried about cutting then, but yeah. then after that, after like, you know, when you know your body, I kind of like, I, I was really worried then. And then I kind of, it, it went off after that. Okay. Slowly. It felt stuck on. That was weird. Like you were at a new weight. Oh yeah. It That's did. freaky. It How all the stuck. Fuck? It all stuck too. That is weird. And then I, and then state was, I don't know. What, what was wrong with you? I mean, why can't it, it's just a caloric deficit thing, right? And the water retention that you could just actually lose it or are you being healthy with trying to lose it or are you doing it unhealthy? I was being healthy. Like oh, okay. I, I, I just working out. You didn't and, spit in a bottle no. to get all the drain, all the fluid out of you. No, that's I, I, in my opinion, I think that's absurd. Yeah. We did that. Yeah. You did? Did that. I would get out of class to go put on a sauna suit and jog laps around all day. Okay. That, that I've done that. I've done okay. that. I freaking except Wilson. It's kind of cool. All the teachers let you do that. Oh yeah. I love that. They're that like, really go cool. ahead, go cut weight. Yeah. And you're like, I, you're like <laughs> you feel cool for doing it. I remember. Yeah. I, um, I've done that a couple of times except where you just get a buddy and you go wrestle in the wrestling room. Oh yeah. And then you get, Oh, that's the worst. You the and then you just sit there and make a cone. So it just heats with you when you got the suit and then it just makes you sweat, put your hoodie over. And then you take it off and it's freaking, yeah. Oh man, you got, you got a pool of water. And you're just like, Oh my God. It's illegal. You so. ever do this? Stuff your mouth with brownies and spit that shit out. No, I did that once. That's how unhealthy I got when I was cutting from 182 to 170. Just to taste it. Just to I get had to the cut taste. it fast. Yeah, and my mom made these delicious brownies. Dude, they smell so good. <sighs> yeah, and I was like, Hard to resist. oh, dude, I was sitting there, a little teenager, dude, don't have discipline. I'm not fucking <laughs> wrestling, kicking ass in tournaments like you since middle school. <laughs> Although, oh, shit. Hey, let me just fucking flex on your ass. Let me see it. Let me see it. Okay, okay. Let's go. You hear that? That's the, that's the sound of success, baby. High school? Any of them high schools? I don't know. Let me check. what you see? Cause, well, because you said, you said that you wanted yeah. you were telling me a story about getting a high school medal. Yeah. Bearcat Invitational right Academic here. I told you this. excellence. Uh? I told you this. Yeah. Oh, you see how that third, fourth place match went? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I got there <laughs> with my busted you ankle. Got the metal, <laughs> you got the hardware. Yeah. 3 8 170 pound right here. Yeah. Fuck. You were an academic good, weapon. Good times. Do I got academic shit? Academic weapon. Academic? Why do you say academic? <laughs> I was a 1.7 GPA. <laughs> I, I, I probably wasn't very much What was your high. GPA? You don't know? No. You know what I'm talking about right now. You're trying to get in college. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm, not, I'm college is out of the picture for me mm. for now. Yeah. Until. Freaky time to join the military though too. Yeah. Listen, I just, I want to, everybody, everybody wants to figure out how to make money. I really want to understand. Like I said, there's people, there's people who know things about money that I don't. And yeah. That's kind of, that's kind of bothersome, especially in the situation that I'm in. I'm like. And like you said, like uh, there's, you can never get enough of it either. That's the problem. But like, there's this guy, this guy I know, Derek Faye, and he comes from a hard upbringing, super abusive family, locked in closets, oh shit, shit, like really bad abuse. And he came from the smallest town in the smallest state, like Rhode Island, some small town in Rhode Island. Uh-huh. And he, when he grew up, he fucking moved to Florida and gone to real estate and is filthy fucking rich. Congrats to that guy. That's fucking awesome. But he's preaching philosophy and shit on his Instagram now. You know him? He's like, yeah, yeah, I know. I went and worked at a documentary with him. We came tight. That's pretty He's cool. I was hanging around. They were buying me dinners. So they're talking about moving money that are hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like it's like how we would address hundreds of dollars. They address hundreds of thousands. Like, like, like it's nothing. (laughs) Yeah. They got so much money, but it was cool. And I think I was like talking to him from the artistic perspective of not, maybe life's not just all about money. And I think he liked that. Yeah, and, it, and it's true because like you said, like where's the line drawn between greed and uh, but money, you can do things, but how we're doing good. But if you if think you about what's survival. Yeah. If you don't like, and like you had said too, if you don't, you could have, you could be, feel the same. You could feel just as lonely in a mansion or feel so just as lonely on the side of the road. You know, like, just yeah. like, like you said, like, and if you don't, if you don't have love and in you your could life, die tomorrow, rich or poor me, rich or poor, you could die tomorrow. Oh yeah. And it's over. Exactly. What'd you do? It's the most important thing. Nobody cares. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly it. Like what kind of story is going to be told about you? And, uh, yeah. that's, that's one thing that's cool. Like I want, I want to, after, and this is, this is another thing. This is why I love fighting so much is I would rather have, and you could probably agree with this too, cause you were in the Marines and you went and fought for your country. Um, having, I guess, let me word this correctly. Like I'd rather have a short lived life of glory that was gloriful, you know, like 
than a long one of of uh, I don't even know what the, what the what the word would be. They say like fuck, a long as a long life of not taking risks. I should say, mm. not doing things that. Interesting, but I'm going to combat that with a quote from General Iro. Okay. Also, Uncle General Iro. Iro. Okay, all right. I love General Iro. Uh huh. And he's like, "There's Zuko. There's nothing wrong with living a long, peaceful life." It's something, <laughs> and he's like, explains how it's like a, it's a, something to strive for. And I totally agree. I feel, fear, I think you should pursue the passions that you feel inside for sure. But when it comes to, uh, you know, just make, doing things that are super risky, because I, I also battle wanting to be like a war correspondent, like Sebastian Junger, and just go to war zones and document it. And, but I also have to consider what do I value and prioritize in life as well. And I really love the people I love. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. So I want to be around yeah. them. Yeah. I want to spend some time. It's going to be short. It's going to be really it's short. It's short in general. It, the whole yeah. thing's short in general. Whole experience. Dude, when I was, so I was in Colombia a couple of years ago shooting a documentary and Columbia. the morning we're, we're going out where I wake up, it's like 20 minutes, 30 minutes until we get picked up by our driver and we go to the dude's house to shoot. And my fucking Tia Vero calls me, my Tia, and she was like, tells me that my mom was in a crazy car accident and Rolled her car a shit ton of times on the side of the highway this morning, and she's in a helicopter being life flighted right now. No one knows what's going on with her. Oh my gosh! And I'm like, oh fuck, dude. They said that they that they rolled a lot on the highway. I said massacre rocks, and the truck was like super bad. And Ugo was in an ambulance getting her boyfriend ambulance driven to Pocatello, and my mom got life flighted to Idaho Falls. And I was like, shit. I went down. I didn't know anything. Got in the fucking car. Just go to work. I'm in Colombia. What am I gonna do? And I remember dude. I was just looking out the window, just staring at the fucking clouds. They look so beautiful. They were so godly. There was like God rays shooting out, you know, it's Medellin. It's called the, it's like the eternal garden is the name of Medellin. That's where Pablo Escobar did all this shit. Hey, let's see a lot of like. It's the eternal it? spring. That's what they call it. Medellin, Colombia. Cause it's just forever. Perfect temperature high up That's in the so mountains, but in cool, the equator. Dude. And it's just beautiful and tropical. That's so cool. And, uh, yeah, the, it was just such a beautiful place when we were going up this mountain. I was like. Being like, I was just thinking, God, please don't let this be the last time I talked to my mom. I was Sad. thinking that. Then we get to the set. I'm going around and I get, the, I got a call. I was oh. be, I fucking compartmentalized that shit away. Yeah. Let me work. Yeah. And that, that distracted me. I was distracted. If I could stay it, I would be under control of my emotions. If I could just focus on work, David Goggins, that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? What am I going to do here? It, channel it into something else. Yeah. But what am I going to do? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go to the airport and try to find it. Like, what? You know what I mean? She, and if she's dead, she's dead. And what am I going to do? Reverse time. You exactly. Know what I mean? Yeah. So I was just thinking, let me just be productive and I'm here just be right productive now. with my, what I'm doing right now. That's where I went. But then I got a call from my Tia Vera when we got to the gym to do the gym workout. Cause you know, I'm doing generation iron. Shit. Yeah. And, uh, there's my Tia said, Oh, she's at the, she's here. She's like, really, she busted up her arm. She had to go get surgery on a bunch of stuff. She like broke her back and was like, oh, uh, the tailgate, they rolled the tailgate smash and landed right in front of her face. Like, smushed through the car because the way it rolled the tailgate of the truck flew up oh landed here gosh. and they rolled on it and Ugo thought she was dead when he saw her she was like making her stay it was very traumatic for them <sighs> our dog the little dog Maya got launched out tiny little dog and was missing for 10 days out in the snowy winter of Idaho out in the massacre rocks and the day my mom got released from the hospital we they found the dog <gasps> that's crazy right Bro. and it was fucking like Tiny shriveled, that's, yeah. That's what whatever yeah. that is. That's crazy. Yeah, that's, that was crazy. Yeah, but when my tia told me that at the gym, dude, I had to step away because I was just. I got my mom on the phone. She put my mom on the phone because she got. She's a nurse, so she got backstage real quick. Idaho Falls, and she was like, she put on. She was hopped up on drugs already, and I was like, love you. And she's like, I love you. And I was just a mess. I was just a mess after that. I, I recollect, and I was like, but everything's good. It made she you got feel a better. She got her brain. We're here. That back, I imagine that was like a big weight. Yeah, and that was like, dude, that what matters, you know? You people need moments like that. Hopefully, they don't aren't permanent. Lucky, I get, I get my lessons. That was a temporary one, just a little tease, but it reminds you of what's important. You know, you want that time. What was I sitting there thinking? Oh, I hope I fucking get another gig to another country. I hope I get more time here in Colombia. I was thinking, I want to see her again. I want to talk to her again. That's you, what's important. You know, when you want to be, have experiences with the people you love, you get very finite time here. You just don't realize it until you start getting older. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah. Man, that freaking, that really puts into perspective about like just enjoying, enjoying your company, enjoying the people you have around you. And it's finite. Yeah. So yeah. she was okay. 
Yeah, she's good. She PT'd her arm up real good. She, she's just a gangster now, just like the dog. <laughs> They're both just tough-ass uh, yeah. survivors now. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's. She was just mostly pissed because she didn't get to take her nursing test because she was doing <laughs> nursing school and she got in that crash like the week before her test. And uh, then she was like, what the hell? I got to wait until I heal and do it again. But yeah, I know she's a champion. Respect. She's my mom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's in the blood. She made the Jason Turner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got to try to live up to that strength. I'm a fucking, I'm that person for my mom all the time too, because Keisha's more emotional and like they're girls, you know, so they cater each other's emotions. I'm more like a, you can do this tough, yeah. like wrestler, like tough let's love. go. We're going to heal. Everything's going to be, I had a reminder all the time, mom, you're alive. You still, we thought yeah. you were dead. Exactly. <laughs> she, because she would be feeling down about her injuries a lot. But I'm like, mom, think about it. You are so lucky. We thought you were gone. Yeah. Look at this. You just got to deal with this. This is nothing. And then after We're gonna you're going to be good. You're going to be fine in three months. And she just had to do PT, stick to it, and healed. That's pretty cool. And you went to Columbia, though. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, Columbia was sick. It How was pretty good. for? Like a week with the fucking famous guy, David Michigan. The cool thing about my job is when I go to record documentaries of these famous guys, they kind of like Where are you put staying? on their best image. Huh? Hotels? Like hotels, hotels or nice Airbnbs. And they're so taking care of you. They're they taking take care, care of good me. Care of you. Oh yeah, they're good. awesome. I love it. As they it's, so, it's such a blessing for me. Thank you, Vlad. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I think they love me. We we have good times together. <clears throat> All right, let me ask you something else. Last one. Last one. All right, last one. If you could master any skill in an instant, what would it be? Any skill in an instant. Yeah, master skill. You'll be the best at it. But you master it in an instant. In an instant. No journey needed. Just, I got it. Okay. You know, that's tough. Cause everything, everything. The journey is the, the journey. beautiful part. Yeah. The journey is the beautiful part. Everything. Uh, if you, one thing I know is if you ask God for, for patience, he's going to test you in ways that require you to be patient. Uh, if you ask God to be strong, he's going to test you in ways that require you to be strong. Yeah. So, uh, one skill, one skill is to be, uh, Relent. I am relentless. I am relentless. Mm. The one skill is to be patient, to be more patient. That's one thing. That's You'd one. wish to learn that instantly. You don't yeah, want to go through the trials of that one. That one would yeah. suck. Yeah. I was like, cause <laughs> just make me patient instantly. Yeah, That'd through, be nice. Through patience, through patience. Uh, th this one thing that I, that I love is, is the fact the, this one thing that I say to is the fastest way to get what you want is like the slow. I, I, just it up. Get it I just butchered it right now. I right, think, think, think about, about it for a sec. Slow is always the fastest way to get what you want. Like the slower, the better. Well, one thing we say in the Marine Corps when we're taking apart guns and doing reloading, doing fast reloads and stuff is smooth is slow, slow is fast. Smooth is slow, slow is fast. Smooth and do it smooth. Yeah. Or slow is smooth, smooth is fast. That's right. Yeah. I so, fucked it up. Yeah. yeah it's, not <laughs> it's been a minute, dude. Like yeah. almost a decade. <laughs> so it's, it's, I think that. Slow is smooth. Cause if you do it slow, you do it smooth. And if you do it smooth, you do it fast versus if you're like, Trying to go fast and you're fucking things up. And how about yourself? What skill? What skill, what skill could you have? I think I'm going to think about something pe like instrumental related because oh. I would love to just fucking jam like a master on something. Like, a, like you know, people like try. <laughs> Imagine being able to just like do that. Um, hmm, bagpipes. <laughs> bagpipes. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think if, my, if I can master any skill. All the uses of artificial intelligence. Oh, dude, you might have just nailed it right there. <laughs> you know, one, the one thing that I understand too is, is, is this, you, you use AI from what I understand, right? Yeah. Uh, and this is one thing that I love about AI. Like I, it's, some people are like, oh, it's, you know, it's, it's so bad. It's this and that. I believe that if you use it the best way that you can, it's not so bad. I, I, I really enjoy it because it's, mm -hmm. it'll give you. It's a tool. Yeah. It'll give you any question. It'll give you any answer to any question that you have. If you, if you word it and you're so articulate about your words and it's meant to help you, you know, that's one thing. It doesn't think for you. You still have to think. Exactly. You have, you have to, to command it. You have to think and then it'll, it just builds yeah. off itself. You use it. It's no, like a calculator. What do you think of, uh, that's, that's. But that. let me say this. Yeah. I just thought of this. Yeah. The way a gun is an equalizer for the physical world of us humans, AI is the equalizer for our minds. Wow. Do you know what I'm saying? A granny can fight a 300 pound muscular man with a gun yeah. because it's an equalizer between the, our physical. 
It doesn't matter how big you are, how you're small getting, you are. It's the out. ultimate equalizer of us all physically. AI is the ultimate equalizer of us all mentally. And explain. Because now we can all become great artists. We can all become great composers. We can all become great thinkers and great essay writers and great. We can bring all our thoughts into the most beautiful way that we can even think. Do you think that takes the special out of it? For the people, for instance, now, like you, you were one of the very, very few people. I don't know. I mean, you have very few people. I don't know. You're probably the only person that I know, but very few people in the world that do this. And like, if everybody did it, you know, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't like if ever, if everybody, you know, like, I think everybody could benefit from what, like a podcast. No, like if you think about a podcast, I always think it'd be great for everybody. Like it's a new social media. Cause you get to really see what people are like. With, with for instance, the way, the way I put your right. expression, the better I can understand you. Okay. Like this is what I'm trying to like get at right here. So with clothes. Okay. okay. So you got like Louis Vuitton, you got Gucci, <laughs> you got all this stuff, right? Yeah. Then you got Walmart clothes or whatever. Right. So, um, you like pretty much if everybody had, if, if Louis, Louis Vuitton is only so, so expensive. And so this, because only so many people can get it because of the price, you know, like, and when you see somebody with it, it's like, oh, special. Yeah, it's special. Rare. So if everybody had that. Hard to acquire. It would, if everybody, exactly. If everybody had that, would it still be so special? Like the words you just said, special, rare. Like, would you say that, because you said AI allows us, and it does. That's one thing that's awesome about it. AI allows us to really become the fullest of ourselves almost. So right? what's that, what's that uh, like risk here? I think the most is the, the arts because people really respect human the human aspect that's added to literature that you could have a story created by ai literature is an art poetry the literally painting to filmmaking to music production and if ai can make anybody be an amazing artist and they're kind of taking the works of other artists then the people are like it's not special because uh, it's a robot doing it and now it's there's a the unique quality is missing but so that's why I think the most romantic nature of it all is bad because if it's applied to business or anything else, like who cares? It's in, it's a creating ease for your business resource. Yeah. It's, it's, it's working smart. Yeah. You know, harder. Yeah. yeah. You're using a computer. Good job. But when the arts, it gets, you know, touchy. And then I think, where's my position on this? And I have to wonder about, I can't help but stop, think about how, it feels in all the texts and Bible and everything. If, and even in what I see in my own life, the best way to live a good life is to combat your sinful nature, to combat your biology. There's like a conscious driver, the spirit, the thing that is good, the peace of God of this universe that made us or whatever it is, right from wrong. the good, the light, like light, you know, it's a straight sign, like the light, which is probably God, the light, God was light or whatever, but it's probably even the Mesoamericans believed in their, in the Mayans and stuff believed that we were made out of light. If you read the four agreements, that's all about that. And it's about how we're like light beings. But I think there's like a battle of good and darkness, you know? And I think our, we fight our biology. Our biology is like, we get angry. We get dumps of fucking adrenaline. We get, everything is our little meat machine making us do things that is just ape like our fucking primate being i want to fuck things i want to fight things i want to fucking Kill. get angry i have pride i my ego all these things you know it's about me and my experience and to be able to step out almost buddhist style and have a perspective of the world where you understand everyone is having if you can get third party awareness then like outer perspective thinking that you're a that's what i think god does puts you in a divinity put a higher perspective beyond just this meat sack there's something more important than everything that our inclination wants to do or if we just follow everything we desire oh fuck i want to eat a donut right now let me just eat that and become a glutton man i think that girl over there is cute let me just fucking go over there you know what i mean like what what kind of person will i become that's very a reckless one. reckless chaotic sinful person living in fucking negativity and bad feelings and never getting building the foundation of something that is like powerful love, which is the ultimate experience you can feel. Exactly. So that tied to the arts, I think to tie in this to the AI, I have a way to go this with this, that tied to this, I think, well, if, if it's us being able to be, it's almost like becoming more robotic like though. Exactly. Where you don't follow your intuitions and your romances, you're following the path. I read this thing somewhere I can't remember, but it was it was to find God is to it's, is the is to self enslave yourself and self enslave enslavement. If you don't know the truth, then you can wander blissfully ignorant. But once you start feeling like you have a path towards the truth, if say there was a truth, you find out exactly what God is. You know exactly what rules you have to follow. The moment you really know, 
Your life is enslaved to those rules. You can never break because now you know. You know. There's and no, we never know. There's no doubt in your mind. You know. You're set. Yeah. And then it's like, but then what kind of life, what kind of chaotic life do you live without that free will? Fuck. That's why it's so great to have free will. That's why God is pro free will. Because this is a chaos thing. And see, let's see how it's the fun of it. If you play a game where you will never die, you'll never lose, you know everything. It's the, who will play that? It's stupid. Wow, it's no fun. There's no point to the game. If you're gonna play a game, you want it to be challenging. You want to have adversities. You want to fall. You want to reset. You want to have to try again and, and fail and fail. And that's what when you finally beat the game and you're at the end, you look back and go, What a journey. Yeah, how unexpected it I was. I screwed how up fun. so many times. But those are the things that you remember, the hard times are the fucking foundations to our character almost. Yeah. Holy cow. Wow. That's and so with that and tied to AI, sorry, back to that. No. Uh, it's like if AI can make us all better, more expressive, if everyone's, it's like, is, is an AI robot really that bad? If it really is going to take off, take out all the biology you know what I mean? There need, what if it's good? What if it, it does good? It's there's, super there's objective. Good and bad, How objective is too objective? You know, I guess we won't know until and we see, though. That's the dark path of AI. You know, and I, that's, it, there, let me, this is one thing I believe with everything. There's good and there's bad, like the yin and yang. You know, there's there's yeah. got to be good in it. And then there's obviously going to be some bad. It's not going to be good to everybody. Oh, Tao Te Ching. I read that one, too. Yeah. That was about yin and yang. <laughs> the <day>. Um. <laughs> That's freaking cool. Sorry. You know, you've done a lot of reading. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, you got a lot of reading to do, dude. I do. I do. Got a lot it's of It's great to do. read. You'll realize how, how much I don't know. It's great to learn shit, dude. How much I don't know. Yeah. That's really what it all boils down to is Socrates style. All I know is that I know nothing. Exactly. And they killed him for that. Yeah. They literally sent us to death because he questioned things and they're like, why don't you just act like, you know, like the rest of us? He says, I don't know. And you guys should act, stop acting like, you know, and they sent us to death. And he said, that's so funny. You think that you're sending me to something horrible. You don't know. You don't know anything about death. So you're thinking you're sending me somewhere bad, but you might be sending me to heaven, to it blissful, to bliss. And they're like, die. They sent, put Galileo into jail for thinking about that. The earth is in the center of the universe. People don't like to think differently. So really try to expand your horizons so you can get your own thoughts. Because if you follow the crowd, crowded mentalities. The cart- I, I was watching this video um, on uh, on YouTube and I don't know how interested you are. And actually, you might be. Uh, it was this documentary. This this uh, Her name's like Maria Zan something. But she, she did a podcast, Joe Rogan. And uh, I had seen first, this side when how I first had gotten like to know about her stuff. Well, pretty much what I'm trying to get at is she, she had followed the cartel around on how they like <laughs> providing context. <laughs> yeah. Providing context. Yeah. So on how they, uh, on how they pretty much. Oh, smuggle okay. drugs. Yeah. She's a journalist that yeah, like that exactly. puts herself into like fucking cartel transports. Exactly. Like boots on the ground. Like yeah. You just she's said. crazy. So she like literally had followed the Sinaloa cartel around and one thing. That's why that they don't kill her. Why yeah, don't they? Because I don't know. I don't know why. What kind of deals does she strike? Dude, they could have literally like the, she's honestly outing them more than she is. Yeah, outing that's them. like how could you? Ever, I would never. And I have and she, family they, things that are tied to the cartel and what is where I'm like, man, I should maybe go do a documentary, but I'm like, I'm probably gonna get my head cut off. Exactly. And so the that's it's just so crazy. Like if you watched it, it's probably like maybe 30, 45 minutes. Oh yeah, it, you yeah, watched it. Her yeah. work. Oh yeah, oh, was, I love it. It was on uh, National Geographic. And you should was, watch her Strepo. I'll watch that thing. We'll text each other the links. Okay. Strepo, the documentary from Sebastian Junker. Mm-hmm. And I'll watch that one. Okay. All right. Then you you got to watch the one I'm, yeah. one I'm talking about. All right. Uh, it was so crazy. She followed them around. Every single step that they did, she followed them. Well, blurred faces? Blurred faces. Blurred faces. Or they'd have a, mm. they'd have a thing on right here. And they, they'd talk, though. They would talk. Normal voice. Normal. Uh, yeah, normal voice. Distorted? No. Normal, no normal voice. Wow. Um, and it was like the process. It was like hot potato. Doosh, 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 doosh. And then... Uh, it's fucking crazy, fucking crazy. But anyway, so she had gotten to, she had gotten to this one point and she's asking him a question. She's like, don't you know that this can kill everybody? And then the guy had told her, he goes, the graveyard is full of, is full of people who knew too much. That's crazy. I read that right there. Yeah. was like, fuck, like people, then the, pretty much what he's saying is people who know too much get killed. Like, yeah, well, it's for sure a way of like a law of power silencing, of holding, silencing holding on to power. Silencing. Yeah, silence. That's a big big thing. Don't let any information th- it's literally a battle of intel when it comes down to warfare. And that knowledge is like life's so knowledge is yeah. power. Yeah, really. The more you know, the better in everything. Mm-hmm. Even goes to World War Two. <laughs> intel. Intelligence is the most and there's so many factors to that one. That was fucking crazy. One day you'll get excited about that, maybe. World War Two is fucking crazy, dude. It's like the it's like our real anime universe where we had a battle of good and evil recently. And that was 
the war about the Holocaust, correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nazis. They're the master race and they wanted to do a cleansing of the human race. Now watching watching the movie Oppenheimer, that had really like got me that movie was so interesting mm. in terms of history, like how they went and created this freaking little town out in the in the middle of New Mexico, and it's now still the town. It's called Los Alamos, and mm. how they had Where all Bob Lazar probably did UFOs. Probably, dude, freaking it, just the whole story behind it, like the way that how the government can be so secretive, like oh yeah, they're still secretive now, you know, and they pretty much control all. But I'm just saying, like to me, that 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 whole movie just kind of really opened my eyes because that was revolving around world war two and just everything that was going on, how sus they were when mm. it came to who was communist and who wasn't. And Have you watched uh, any Quentin Tarantino work? No. This guy. Quentin Tarantino, Quentin Tarantino Pulp Fiction, uh, Inglorious Bastards, Brad Pitt, world war two. No. Inglorious Bastards is, that's a fucking good movie. That is a fucking top tier movie. <laughs> Seriously. Okay. It's fucking kill, it's killing Nazis. Movie. It's, it's awesome. Movie. One of them, Interstellar. Oh. I love Interstellar. You like that one? Yes, and that's the, that's the one where they go into space and they get stuck in there and uh, they're like in these time time pods and then the person break they, that one guy breaks out. Correct me if I'm wrong. That guy breaks out and then they're stuck and he went goes and breaks out this other girl out of like this big old pod. No, no, it's what's, not that one. Tell me, Interstellar. I'm not Interstellar. wondering wondering which one you're thinking about. That's a really good movie. Though. Is it old? No, I don't think it's old. Uh -huh. But it's cool. Interstellar got the kid from Dune in it. And it's got Matthew McConaughey. Good actor, I know that. Okay, so you didn't see the Matthew McConaughey one, right? No. Yeah, that one's a good one. It's, that's a Christopher Nolan movie. Christopher Nolan did uh, Inception as well. It's a good actor. You know, Christopher Nolan? Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan's a director. Well, he, he was... He, well, then who played... Well, then I thought... Who played uh, <laughs> fucking Oppenheimer? I thought that was... No, that's an actor. Christopher Nolan directed Oppenheimer. Okay, fair enough. He's a director. Made some, he, made that's why it's... Bug. Yeah, he's a good director. He made Oppenheimer, Tenet... Interstellar, Inception. I love Christopher Nolan. He's a, one of the like greatest directors for sure. People regard him as one of the greatest. He fucks with time. His things always had to do with time. I love that. But Oppenheimer didn't really fuck with time that much. No. But maybe it was like we're running out of time kind of thing. Were you a fan of the movie? Well, I told you, mean, I had a bad experience with yeah. the audio. And it's a very dialogue driven movie. Yeah, it is. And we, at the we went to, to the listen. theater. It was all fucked up. Dude, it was freaking. No subtitles either. We couldn't even hear. We're like, what the fuck is happening? It was so loud. I remember I fell asleep. I went in the theater. And I actually just recently, the reason I, I recently watched it probably about a month ago. And oh, dude, it was it like I watched it in the theater. I fell asleep because I was like, I can't, oh my gosh. I can't sit and watch a three hour movie. Yeah. I have to get up and fucking pause. What about it. Dune 2? Dune 2, no. You've watched Dune 1? No. Well, Dune 1 sets up all the fucking exposition that you need for Dune 2. But Dune 2, Dune 1 is all <laughs> prophecy. Dune 2 is all war. And the war in Dune 2 is remarkable. Yeah, the scenes are so awesome. I would honestly just go watch Dune 2 for the fucking <laughs> sake of it and be like, I don't understand, but these scenes are going to be fucking cinematic masterpieces. It'll be worth it. it they're, they're cinematic masterpieces. Truly, right at the beginning, you're like, holy shit. Hans Zimmer... He's a very famous composer. He does the music for it. It's fucking awesome. And music, mu music adds a big part to it. As uh, Dr. Cornell West says, all art aspires to the, to the condition of music. Music is the highest condition of the arts. And if you want to, you want your painting to make people feel what they feel when they listen to music. Wow. Music makes your goosebumps rise. Music makes kids dance, snakes dance. You music know? moves your body, but some good music can make you get goosebumps. Good music can make you cry. Good music can make you think of love. Good music can, think it can of touch hate. you. It can, it can get you. It gets you in your soul. It probably has something to do with vibrations. It's pretty special. Something to do with vibrations. The actual audible vibrations. You ever see when they put a speaker with a plate right above it and they vibrate certain tones and they put sand on a plate and it turns into crazy shapes? No. You never seen that? No, I I know that the, there's such thing as sound waves, and they believe that they're, they're, everybody believes everything. But um, that that could have been one of the ways to like to move, move to things. Move, yeah, to move because you can you can move small things with sound waves now. I can't Be, with if you the vibration like if you think about uh, there's like if you vibrate if you they shoot a sound there's like certain decibels that can go with an object and make it like vibrate and move around. And shit, it's weird. It's smart shit you can blow people's ears out with sound waves there's like real power to fucking vibrations of fucking audio really is it weird what the fuck is it? yeah you can do radar you can do all this there's all kinds of freaky shit with audio and you knew all that cool stuff because you were you got a you were got a little sneak peek in the marines you got to see stuff that 
I would assume that the general public doesn't get to see. No, dude. My life consisted of getting oil sprayed on me in the back of the <laughs> Osprey fucking sh- Delta. You over sitting there flying, helicopters crashing all the fucking time. And you're like, when is mine going to be next? And that no. motherfucker will be the next one. Seriously, another helicopter crash and killed like a whole squad recently in the Marine Corps. Helicopters that, are just dangerous in general. Though, yeah, right? Kobe, all this stuff, you know, yeah. like it just happens. They're Planes freaky. Planes aren't necessarily, did you think, see the thing on Alaska Airline where the freaking With door the Boeing, fell off? Boeing constantly. It's like th- Boeing's third incident this year. That's fucking. I no, like, it was Alaska. It was the. It was but the, the safety. jet is Boeing. The brand oh. that flies it is Alaska, but the jet that the, is built is a Boeing jet. That's fucking scary, bro. I and imagine being the person in that seat right there while you're freaking <sighs> door comes. There's off. a saying that says, "If it's Boeing, I ain't going," because <laughs> Boeing has problems. <laughs> It's freaky. They're probably going to cancel my podcast because I said this. They're yeah, a billion dollar industry <laughs> flying people all over the world. Yeah. Okay, brother. Thank you so much for coming. I'm fucking starving. We got to get out of here. You Wait, you're not me. hungry? You don't want to go get some food? Oh, that's not going to make some dinner. So I think I'll probably oh, get yeah. some food. I get home my big yeah, family. Yeah. <laughs> you, got, you probably got people to tend to. Yeah. All right. Let's do this. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Peace out, brother. Peace out.